It's time for Mac Break Weekly. Andy Anako's here with Renee Ritchie. Will Apple ever become a VR company? Is there a new Thunderbolt display on the way? What else can we expect from WWDC? It's all coming up next on Mac Break Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for MacBreak Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is MacBreak Weekly, episode 509, recorded Tuesday, May 31st, 2016. The Waz Cut. MacBreak Weekly is brought to you by Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Rocket Mortgage brings the mortgage process into the 21st century with a fast, easy, and completely online process. Check out Rocket Mortgage today at quickenloans.com slash MacBreak. And by Texture, the mobile app that lets you access the world's most popular magazines. Anytime, anywhere, using your phone or tablet. For your free trial, visit texture.com slash MacBreak. And by Ministry of Supply. Ministry of Supply uses performance technology to make your work clothes incredibly comfortable. For performance menswear designed to work with your body, visit ministryofsupply.com slash MacBreak and use the code MacBreak to get 15% off your first purchase. Offer expires June 30th, 2016. It's time for MacBreak Weekly, the show where we cover the latest from Apple land. Andy Anako is here from the Chicago Sun Times. He's living in Blueville today. Yes, we're 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 in the we're in the transitional space of the office cleanup where the office is sparkling clean, but there are no like really nice <laughs> video lights, and there are yeah. So <laughs> you have to, you have to deal with like the work light that I was using in the other room to sort socks and laundry. With. I uh, I dread the coming office cleanup for my office. It has uh, it, so many layers of midden. All the yeah. little, all the stuff, and I never. So it's just a mess. And the basement, <gasps> you got it. Well, you got to do it. You got to do the. It's. I, I keep coming back to what uh, Clemenza said to uh, Michael Corleone in the in the uh, first Godfather, like when there's going to be this gang war. He says, oh, this, this kind of stuff has to happen. How, how bad is it going to be? Pretty damn bad. But you know, this thing's got to happen every uh, ten years. Clear, so clear, clear, puts, clear, out the, clear. puts out the bad blood. Puts out yeah, the bad so. blood. Yeah. Go. Let's go to the mattresses. Also I, here, I, found, I, 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 I will say that I, I found my, my oldest so far surviving uh, Mac T-shirt from 1991. So wow. I, I have a T-shirt that can run for Congress now, and he's going to be running for president soon enough. Actually, John, I think there's an older T-shirt uh, in my office uh, in the in the those old uh, tie-dye hippie. <laughs> <B -mug? laughs> I think it's a V-mug shirt. And I'm pretty sure it uh, dates from the 80s, my friends, the 80s. That's Rene Ritchie. He's from imore.com, more or less. And he's decided to live in the uh, in the glow of the dying sun, apparently, Eight, 80 million years hence. Here is my... Uh, what Andy looked so cool, I decided to yeah, you know, like bring it. some heat. What what era is this? Yeah, that's that's like 1990. It says the B mug T shirt, which stands for Berkeley McIntosh Users Deadhead. Group, yeah. tie dyed in Berkeley by Deadheads. I would <laughs> I guess didn't bring them with me, but at the Apple uh, Infinite Loop store right now, they have they always change up the designs of the T shirts. And this month, they have three retro T shirts. They have the original Isaac Newton Apple logo, oh. uh, the Susan Care icons, and the original Mac icon oh. on white T shirts, and they look so spectacular. Jealous. Yeah, so, so if you're in the area, check them out. I'm, I'm gonna be so thank thank you so much. I'm sure that the packages in transit where you bought, of course, bought me one of each of those. This is beautiful. because why would I not want that? You're you're gonna you're gonna be like the Canadian like t-shirt drug mule <laughs> or like for Cupertino. Which one should I wear? Should I wear the this is I'm pretty sure still a B mug. It's just doesn't say anything. It's tie dye. That's a beautiful tie dye. Gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. So is it true? Uh, are, is Apple going to have to shut down FaceTime and messages again? <laughs> Um, damages award now $190 million. Veernet X, is it fair to call them a patent yes. troll? <laughs> yes. Patent ogre. Any even. name you wish. 
I mean, they sued. They, they, uh, it's, it's one of those things where it's like a patent that's in an adjacent area that is, if loosely and broadly interpreted in a certain district in Texas, will right. allow them to get an easy verdict and a lot of money. Uh, and it's caused a lot of chaos because Apple had to totally re-architect the way things like FaceTime worked and move them through relay servers when originally it was meant to be a peer-to-peer -peer system that would be, you know, theoretically have fewer points of failure. Uh, and Apple has kept appealing and they have kept, uh, Vertinex has kept winning. Vernet X has kept winning, and now they're asking a judge just to order Apple to shut the services down because apparently that's that's something you can do in Texas, Leo, or at least in the rocket dock. Dr. Mom wants us to call them gonifs, which is some apparently some <laughs> Yiddish term that probably is filthy, but is the that... opposite of menches. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so this is a little tight. <laughs> I uh, I was a little more slender in those days. <laughs> <laughs> Putting on the B-Mug shirt. Wow, I don't know if I can breathe, but uh. <laughs> so, uh, but the, but, okay, so they asked the court in Texas, of course, to, to make Apple stop. Uh, this is following their victory uh, to the term of $625 million. Now they say they want Apple to stop offering FaceTime and <laughs> messages, and they want the, uh, the uh, penalty to be increased by 100 90 million so that would make it uh, in my to my careful calculations like gajillion dollars um, <laughs> yeah also, they, uh, it's, they got, apple's got that much money in the cup holders of the new apple car yeah they on. could afford it but the, 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 it's the yeah it's the litigation that's painful yeah right a 20 this dates back to a 2012 ruling that was thrown out then tried again um so <laughs> I mean, the U.S. Apple Patent and Trademark it. Office has rejected the four patents. <laughs> it's, I mean, Apple can litigate this forever, but it, it has totally stopped development. Like, for example, FaceTime, uh, the development on that has totally stopped. It, it, Apple has done almost nothing with it except for re-architecting it in a way that is that caused a lot of problems for a lot of people. Uh, and the scary thing is, like, I don't know what FaceTime and iMessage are doing that most that the same patent couldn't be broadly interpreted for other instrument instant messaging clients, which is something we've seen with patent trolls before is they go after a couple small targets, get some money, go after a couple big targets, try to get more money and then go after everybody. Uh, so I, I, I just don't know how often we can keep seeing this, Leo. Yeah, that, that's one I've, I've been hearing in the, in the post Google I.O. stuff. I've been hearing that one of the reasons why uh, Google has keep has continued to update and do like revolutionary things with their messaging software is to shift from stuff that has uh, only bulletproof patent uh, protection and make sure it has like kryptonite protected protection yeah. uh, and stuff that is absolutely that's been sort of like battle tested already because uh, as, as Renee implied, it's. It's it's so it's almost like you're building a spacecraft. Every time you want a company like Apple or Google or Facebook wants to introduce a new technology, they have to make sure that the pat that the patents are absolutely 100% airtight. And that doesn't mean like with the, the Samsung trial, making sure you didn't copy from anybody else. It means that I have to know if if I have if I'm using this system, where did this first idea come from and who owns the IP from that and if I'm including this code library from here where did that code library from, come from and it's not about like making sure that people don't uh, developers don't get screwed over it's making sure that if there is just that little bit of wiggle in the in the in the patent that's uh, that's where some uh, patent troll can get in and really cause trouble uh, we, we often complain about how you know a company they don't, Apple doesn't get it they're not improving FaceTime they're not keeping up and that what uh, what uh, Renee says is uh, tracks with what I've been hearing that it's not it's it's there's a lot there's a lot of implications to Apple moving forward with FaceTime and they've been frustrated by things that have nothing to do with technology. Yeah, and it's so hard to see because you know Andy's point is uh, spot on, but we saw a bunch of developers sued over in-app purchases on a patent based on fax machines which I, I think is almost impossible for anybody to predict, but it was allowed to continue. And it was small amounts because they figure people will just pay out uh, and it helps them build their war chest. And uh, I don't know. I don't know what we can do. Now, here's a patent from a non-patent uh, troll, at least a, uh, an entity that has a little more uh, clout than Virnet X. Caltech yeah. also suing uh, over... Apple says, by the way, we're the number one target of uh, patent trolls. Caltech's says it has a patent uh, for Wi-Fi chips and and uh, the Wi-Fi chips in Apple's technology, which I'm sure Apple doesn't make their own Wi-Fi chips. As far as I know, they don't. Um, I don't know if they ship them. <laughs> you know, the Broadcom is also being sued. Um, they Broadcom creates the Wi-Fi chips in the iPhone and the MacBook and other Apple products. In fact, Broadcom creates the Wi-Fi chips in pretty much every computer I've ever seen. Intel does some Wi-Fi chips, but 
almost all my my Dells all have Broadcom chips. And, and how can these not be friend? I mean, and and that's the thing is that sometimes they don't sue immediately. They wait for a while until the technology yeah. is embedded in everything and then sue. But usually the fair, reasonable, and non discriminatory access uh, rules, which means that if you want your technology to be included in a standard that everybody uses, you have to agree to make those patents easily accessible to everybody who uses it. Otherwise, you know, those two things are are very different uh, priorities. You know, it really, I mean, it's really a lawsuit against Broadcom, which creates the chips. Uh, and the patents uh, could date to 2006 and 2012. They're for 802.11n and 802.11ac. So they're recent technologies that, uh, quote, allow for faster data transmissions, end quote, while simplifying the hardware. Uh, so, you know, sometimes these are legit. And Apple probably uh, is just in there because they have deep pockets. Mm -hmm. They're like everybody else using Broadcom's chips. Uh, all right, enough court stuff, brand. right? Yeah. yeah, I don't. We won't do any more of that because that's boring. <laughs> and it's so en enervating. It's and it's it is. I feel the life sucked out of me right now. <laughs> exactly. Thank God I'm wearing a B mug tie dyed shirt because that <laughs> that pushes life. Sure. It's invigorating. It's sure. invigorating. Sure. That shirt on, you're at least 15% stoned. <laughs> <laughs> An argument can be made for 17. It does have a little patchouli uh, fragrance uh, left over. Uh, okay, so WWDC just around the corner. Thunderbolt stock limited for the Thunderbolt displays at Apple stores. Usually that means perhaps something new is coming along. And they, Apple hasn't updated its uh, displays in a long time, right? No, they are waiting on Thunderbolt three, which is also rumored to be shipping. Ah, so what if is Thunderbolt three uh, downward compatible? So if I had a, a new MacBook Pro with Thunderbolt three on it, could I use a, an old Thunderbolt display? Yes, right. Yes. Could I? Okay. Next question. Could I use a Thunderbolt three display with an old MacBook Pro? Go the other way. I, yeah, I guess it would depend on what the display supported because you need the 3 to push the amount of bandwidth that you uh, need for a 5K display, for example. So if the 5K right. display, whatever resolution it supports, if it does support low resolutions, you'd be able to drive it as a low-res monitor, but not, not at anything approaching the yeah. 5K mark. At least one UK Apple store reports stock of those Thunderbolt monitors didn't run out, but was returned to the warehouse. Mm, so bum, that bum. would... That, bum, 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 bum. Also, Airport Extreme and Time Capsules out of stock at many Apple stores, uh, although uh, 9 to 5 Mac saying that could be because of a recent firmware update or an FCC compliance issue. But we did hear rumors, weren't they, uh, didn't we, that they were going to update the Airport Extreme, isn't it? Isn't and they due? might be due because they were, yeah, they last updated them in WWDC a couple of years ago. Yeah. They introduced that tower design. Uh, Are they, they do have AC it. Airport Extreme, so they're yes. at least up to the latest uh, 802.11 standard. So, uh, but it would make sense. New displays, new fi uh, 5K cinema display. Do they still call them cinema displays? Uh, Apple not. Thunderbolt displays. Thunderbolt displays. A 5K Thunderbolt would be really nice. Yeah. It, and, it, uh, it, it would also be a really good gift to the pro community that's feeling a little bit short shrifted right yes. now. Yes. Um, they've, uh, of course, the difficulty is that it's not like having the old cinema displays where you could simply plug it into pretty much every, anything in the product line. Uh, get it, driving a 5K display is a very, very special thing that will require kind of like the best CPUs you yeah. can possibly get. Yeah. Uh, but so that's so the that if they are if we are thinking about Apple introducing a 5K Thunderbolt display, the implication would be that there is hardware coming that's going to support it as well. That's not necessarily a, a, a Mac Pro. I just bought, and I don't know how I'm going to use it. It's kind of impractical. A 43-inch Dell display <laughs> that's 4K. It has it's 1080p times two times four. So um, you could have the idea is it has four inputs. Are you carrying it over here, John? Yeah, <laughs> John is actually carrying it over here in a display of wonders. amazing manly fortitude <laughs> a display this, of unusual size this thing yeah look at the size of that huh yeah oh it eclipsed that's, andy that's i don't a, know if you a, really that's, you want to that's a tanning bed it's a tanning bed uh, wow yeah minecraft uh, must look so good on that but it has four inputs so you could in theory i think it's really more for it's especially modern for day traders and stuff who want people who want f like rocket launchers and like super like villains NASA. leo you could run your super, super villain empire villains. Uh, because you could put four computers on it. You could have four 1080p displays on it. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I, I think, well, I, I think a lot of people ignore how much their computing experience can be changed by just swapping out to a really good display on a really good, like, monitor arm. 
Uh, I just took, I actually my my Dell display here isn't even particularly good. It's the I mean it's 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 really really good. It's a three hundred fifty dollar display. It supports all the video modes, but it's not like super elegant. But the fact that now it's, uh, it's plugged into my MacBook has changed how I use my MacBook. The fact that now I have for the first time it, uh, a, a screen that's attached to a two hundred dollar monitor arm, and now I can move it exactly wherever I want it to go has this is one, as, as I'm uh, emptying up my office and rebuilding my office it's well here are all the different screens I didn't need anymore because now I have this screen that I can park direct I can move it directly in, behind uh, my camera when I'm when I'm podcasting or I can move it low when I'm doing it this or I can have it down over here when I need to be a second monitor for this other computer over here uh, so a lot of people if they're thinking about budgeting fifty hundred dollars to two thousand dollars for a new Mac Oftentimes, you might find that if you just spend $1,000 improving just where you're sitting, how you're sitting, what you're typing on, and what you're looking at, uh, that's, in, that's an even better way of improving how your office works. Maybe a better way to spend the same amount of money would be to buy what we bought for the ultimate virtual reality gaming machine, which is one of these 34-inch 21.9 uh, yeah, curved yeah. monitors. That That's about $1,300. Arabia bucks. looks so good on yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> and that and that I I would love to see Apple and I I wouldn't be surprised everybody's selling them now. Uh I wouldn't be surprised to see Apple make uh, one of these. This is this is I can't remember which one we bought uh but this is the LG um and would you need this is Thunderbolt. I don't know if it's Thunderbolt 3, but this is Thunderbolt. I don't know if you'd need Thunderbolt 4 or 3 to uh, to drive it, but it is it is these are gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. And uh and I think these are a little more practical than than stacked 4k the idea of going super wide yeah yeah i mean depends. Like, some people don't like turning their heads some people don't like looking up and down so yeah. there's i guess your personality right. traits yeah and these let's see this this is the uh, lg has two uh, display port Can a good I, indicator for apple is what they did on the imac so if we look back display. a few years they introduced the ips panel on this on the last mic uh, imac redesign and when they had a good amount of the imax on market they brought out the new thunderbolt display with the same panel right. so if you look at the current imac and its 5k panel uh, especially now that it's high de it's uh what it, ip ip3 rated uh, for color gamut it's a good indicator that that's probably the panel we'll see in the next thunderbolt display is there any indication in os 10 about what aspect ratio it, it's it would support any any aspect ratio probably yeah yeah we plugged that uh, 43 inch into my uh 2012 macbook and it worked fine and i don't know what the resolution was it was very high resolution but it worked fine could you read it leo or did you have to scale it up no it does high i love high dpi apple invented this everybody's doing it now but apple invented it and for their retina displays and uh we do we totally need that I don't know how well others do it. The way Apple does it is beautiful, which is they 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 use half the res, half the native resolution, but they take the extra pixels and they do uh, they do anti-aliasing, so it really looks super crisp. And, and they're nice. smart enough to let the content be native resolution, so if That's you have a video or an image, yeah, yeah, it's full res. That's the key for for me. I, I think that the real sell of, of Apple displays is just the quality of the image, where you get this super high contrast display. Uh, I, whenever I'm testing out a screen, it's always with uh, the, uh, one of the uh, probably the first Godfather movie, the first the opening scene. Mm, so dark. It's, it's not. And it's not just. Not only is it halfway shadows. There's supposed to be detail in the right. shadows. Right. So uh, a, a decent screen, you will see blacks, idea. and you'll you'll see you'll see a tuxedo where you can see like uh, highlights on the lapels. On a really bad screen, you won't see the highlights on the on the lapels. But on a really really good screen, you will see that there is wrinkles and there's lights and there's things like that happening. Uh, and with uh, with Apple displays, just things are so much crisper, so much more more detailed. There are times when even the difference between uh, uh, doing like a Photoshop thing. Uh, here on my on my desktop here, I will actually have my iPad as a second display so that if I want to, if I really, really want to see how good this possibly can be, I will drag the window into the iPad because it really is the highest quality of display that uh, that I have in the house. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't know if they, I think really that's really, you, you, you nailed it, which is that people, and people pay a premium for an Apple display, but if you're a photographer or a videographer, if you're somebody who needs an accurate it's, well, I, I think that's one of the few features that really uh, uh, improves everybody's lives. It's not until you go back to like, you, it, let's say that you're 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 using your your MacBook and you're watching videos or you're just on the web or you're just looking at your own photos and then you help your kid with their homework and they have a school issued three hundred dollar Samsung Chromebook and you see oh my God I'm looking at the same pictures I was looking at on my MacBook but 
it doesn't look like in any way that I don't want to be staring at this for three or four hours. And I feel like I'm going to be hauled off to child by Child Protective Services by making my kid use this display. Yeah, the first time I saw the 5K display at the event, I felt so like it was gorgeous. better than reality. Like I would fall yeah, into yeah. it and just not want to leave. Isn't it and funny And they're really though, good about you... individually calibrating them and, and the color management technology through their whole device stack makes sure that, you know, what you see is pretty much what you get going through the whole thing. Isn't it how funny how used to it you get though? Because I remember when I yes. first got my 5K iMac, I was like amazed. And a couple of days later, it's just my computer. But then you look at a regular display and the pixel is so big, you feel them cutting your eyes. <laughs> Sand, I think sandpaper is this. Yes. <laughs> I got to say that that's for me, that's more of a change when I'm going from one MacBook to the other. It's one of the reasons why I can't deal with uh, a 13-inch MacBook Air. But on my desktop, given that there's going to be like a foot to 18 inches of distance, I certainly don't mind it at all. I'd much rather have a higher quality, lower resolution display than a 4K display. Uh, it's I can certainly see the difference, but it's not uh, that that sort of retina burning uh, dis difference that I get uh, on laptop displays. I'm kind of stuck because uh, once you buy the 5K iMac, you have to use it. I mean, you I guess you could put it in the corner and face away from you <laughs> and drive other monitors, but you kind of want to use its display, right? So yeah. uh, if you want to get so what I have is uh, two of my older cinema displays on either 24 inch cinema displays on either or 27 inch cinema displays on either side and then the Mac in the middle. And I'm really stuck. There's not really I can't. That's one of the reasons that 43 inch. I'm kind of wondering, well, what am I going to do with it? I can't. I'm not going to attach it to my 5K iMac. That wouldn't be a good idea. I have a couple of friends who put a vertical 4K panels on either side of their <laughs> Mac display. Yeah. They just want all the pixels. I've, I've seen that, too. So uh, sideways, so you get yeah. the portrait mode. Yeah. Then it's like ears on your 5K. <laughs> really big it's dumbo like fighter, ears. <laughs> Actually, the first time I saw a friend, a developer who had that, that display, it really felt like as a kid going to mass every Sunday, like the way they have the way that they have the stained glass behind the altar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they have like oh, it's a triptych. Vertical panels yeah, it's a triptych. The, right, yeah. The, 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 the last stations of the cross, and then in the middle, there's the beatification <laughs> or something. I like it. And then the thing uh, that's getting I, me now is the high, um, the high, def, the high, high dynamic range. Sorry, where they have better color because once you start seeing the better color, that to me is much more impressive than a lot of like the three D fads or things that we had for a while. I agree. Do we have any HDR uh, monitors yet? It's a slow, slow process. So right now, the the, the new IMAX have that uh, P three color gamut, so it does have a wider uh, range of colors. Uh, and there's some uh, I forget the name of the company. But there's LG is doing a high dynamic range monitor uh, television set. Uh, and there's a couple other, I think Vizio has a $120,000 version, but also a $6,000 version. We, we uh, actually, I'm trying to, I think the one that we have uh, for the ultimate virtual reality game machine is the Acer Predator. Nice. Um, 12, but 1300 bucks, And it's, it really looks beautiful. Question from the chat room. Uh, I'll open it, either one of you guys. Do you need to calibrate the, the Apple 5K iMac? Or does it come to your home kind of ready to go? It it's comes most, calibrated, yeah. Sorry, Andy. No, I, I, I was gonna, we, were, we were about to say the same thing. Yeah, it, it comes calibrated. As a matter of fact, most new monitors, even third parties I've seen, the uh, the cheap ones are not calibrated. The ones that look the same but that cost like $80 more, for instance, will typically, you're buying a calibrated monitor that will come with a sheet of paper. Uh -huh. and here is the, here is the, te here is the, the test uh, sheet on this. Right. Here's how it was calibrated and what the specs of this actual screen are. But if uh, you're so a if, pro, you probably have... Uh, whatever they call that photo retinometer or something that you put on the this i call them screen suckers yeah they, yeah they put the on spiders the, the spiders that you put on the screen and, and calibrate it I mean, create your own color profile apple really created that whole thing in the earliest days because they were doing a lot of pre-press they were the, the color first, matching they were so first important. to do that weren't they yeah, and some people do like if you if you really work in a business where you need precise color matching over time then you probably want to check it you know, you might have your, That's you might true. start doing it, it changes, on a monthly basis right? and then six months. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, things do change and and you might change profiles for some project or another. So uh, if you're in that business, though, I assume you have spiders hanging off your monitor right. pretty much every day anyway. Yeah. 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 And also when you change the lighting in your office, you also need to recheck that calibration because, and also your eyes happen to change uh, from month to month and year to year sometimes. So if you're, if oh, it's in. Now I want true tone. Yeah, exactly. If you're, <laughs> if you're in the business of, I, I, I had this idea that, uh, because uh, I, I go to I go to a lot of like big comics conventions, and I've always thought about you. I'd, I'd love to do cosplay, but I don't know what I would go as. I'd love to do that, cosplay. Really, and, 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 really? Yes, <laughs> if it's it's fun because it's like you you look. This at is your ambition. 
I, I'm my, my ambition is actually to have as much fun over the course of one day as every, all these That's cosplayers seem to be having. Yeah. As, I, as I'm taking pictures, like these people are having a great, great, I'm having a great time too, but it seems as though it's a, they're having a good time that's different from me taking pictures. But I, I, I have this idea that I'm going to, I'm going to make a suit that's, that's made out of exactly 50% neutral gray and like printed versions of the standard like color calibration test card. And I'm going to, everyone's going to want, want to take my picture because that will be like, oh my God, if I just simply start with, start with in Lightroom by just calibrating based on the, the, this, this one person's jacket and pants, every other picture taken in the same location will have perfectly balanced color. Let's take a break. Lots more to talk about WWDC coming up. And uh, we'll talk more about that. Andy Anako is here from the Chicago Sun-Times. Renee Ritchie from imore.com. Our show today brought to you by Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans. If you've ever uh, bought a house or uh, refinanced, if you've ever gone out and, and, and gotten a mortgage, you know that there's a lot of paperwork involved and you spend a lot of time at the loan officer's office sitting there signing things. And I'm just, I'm so thrilled that there's finally a company that takes this into the 21st century rocket mortgage by Quicken Loans. Uh, who was it uh, I was talking to? Was it Brad Sams? I think it was on Windows Weekly last week who just refinanced his house. He said it was amazing. They did everything from the computer or, you know, could do it from your smartphone or tablet for that matter. And then uh, when it came time to sign the papers, they, may, they sent them in a box. A notary arrives at your door saying, okay, let's do this. And it's done. You don't have to leave your house. You don't. You can do the whole thing without ever leaving your house. All online. It is amazing. It's fast. It's powerful. I think they they chose their name aptly. Rocket Mortgage has taken all the complicated, time-consuming parts of applying for a mortgage out of the equation. No more searching through stacks of old files or paperwork. You can submit your your pay stubs, your uh, all your information automatically online. At the touch of a button, bank statements. It's so great. And you can even do it from your iPad, sitting on the couch. I want you to check it out. Quickenloans.com slash MacBreak is our special page. Equal housing lender licensed in all 50 states. NMLSconsumeraccess.org, number 3030. Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans. And by the way, even if... Uh, like if you're shopping for a home, a little pro tip from me. I've done this a few times now. You get pre-qualified uh, at Rocket Mortgage, and you are a much more attractive buyer. And it is a seller's market these days, at least here in our area. Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans. QuickenLoans.com slash MacBreak. Andy Anako, Renee Ritchie, moving on. Do we see any VR or any any even a tip of the hat to VR at the WWDC? I mean, everybody else is showing their thing. Tim Cook with the Apple helmet. <laughs> the Apple <laughs> helmet. You know, Apple would make it look better, right? It would uh, somehow see, not so be so interesting. Geeky. It's so interesting to me because Apple waited ten years to get into phones and to get into tablets, but they only waited a few years to get into watches. You know, arguably they didn't have as much time to observe other people and sort of figure out a. Uh, a really sharp product going in, but it was nice that they were involved in the early stages because we've all got to spend a year, you know, growing with the Apple Watch. So, do, do they do the same thing in VR? Do they watch the Oculus and the HTC Vive and the Galaxy Gear, and do they figure out, you know, it, right now it's not a mainstream product. For the really good ones, you need a super powerful PC. You got wires coming out of your head. You got a big helmet on. Is that a product Apple would bring to market? Not, not traditionally. They might wait until there's better batteries and they're more portable and they're more elegant devices. But that's what I find so exciting about this is now with the watch, you know, would app would Apple get into this so early. Oh, and also, uh, consider the fact that uh, Apple is able to do something as different with the iPhone uh, because they uh, right now Apple has iPhone money. Yeah, <laughs> they right. The iPhone, they didn't That's have right. IPhone money. So, uh, so uh, they, they also kind of had to wait five years to figure out what they what where they want to take their shot. Now they really have the ability to say, "With this, uh, this is our version of VR," just as they could say, "This is our version of of a watch," and we are going to we are going to be the company that takes three or five years to get it to exactly where we want it to go, and to wait for the mainstream users to come around to our way of thinking. So. Uh, there's definitely been a lot of movement in VR and Apple, particularly in the past year and a half. Whether they're going to have something to announce at WWDC, I, I'm not sure, uh, because the difference between 
having something that looks like it's pointing towards a, a real thing and having even an API, let alone hardware, that they can ship uh, is a really big thing. I think it requires a certain amount of strategy that they haven't decided upon yet. And they're also they're, they're not they're not so uh, self-conscious about themselves that uh, the fact that uh, the Android side of things is doing so much of moving forward in VR and they're not is going to they're not going to lose any sleep over that whatsoever. Yeah, no I'm wondering if Apple iPhone. might just recuse themselves in this one or leave the just say, yeah, we'll leave it to you guys. Yeah. Well, is the helmet the product? I mean, that's one of the big questions is right now, the obvious application for VR is a, is a headset that you can use for entertainment and video gaming. And, and Apple like doesn't that, do that, right? Apple doesn't care no, about that. No, it's, it's not a – Apple doesn't care about chipsets. They care about feature sets. And maybe it's as simple as Apple VR is all going to be about the heads-up display in the Apple car or about windows ah, that turn into right. – you know, that make you, make you forget the highway and think you're driving through Jurassic Park. I mean, there's all sorts of applications. Right now, we don't even think about – uh, LCD or LED or OLED as a technology. It's just, it's the screens around us. It's in our watches right. and our phones. And maybe, I mean, we saw we saw people that do basically person in the middle attacks on the photons going into our eyes as a way to give us virtual reality images. So it's totally, it's, it's totally exciting technology, but there could be very, very different ways that it manifests itself. Should Apple pay more attention to gaming? Historically, it's never been a great game platform. Um, you know, thanks to Steam, at least you can, you know, there's some games, but they've always been kind of, uh, you know, an afterthought for game developers. I don't, I don't, I don't think it's a game that they can win uh, the way that it's being won by other platforms. Yeah. The, they, I think that they're in a great position to win the platform of casual gaming. Like people certainly on want, mobile, they, they're doing great. Yeah, exactly. People who want to play puzzle games, people who want to play like arcade style vintage games, they are not going to be able to fight the fight where you have these people who are willing to spend eight hundred dollars per month at least on their gaming because they, they will not be able to sell the sort of hardware where someone can spend $4,000 and essentially have shuttle launch capability from their <laughs> living room. And, and that's when, when you talk about someone needs to be able to drive a 4K display at 60 frames per second with zero latency, Apple would have to create an entire new company version of themselves just to get that to the market. And they're, those the people who buy that sort of stuff, they don't really care about uh, the the uh, the kind of aluminum that's used to create the cooling bridge for the CPU. They just want the frame rate. So it's it's not a market that I think Apple is well suited so for. So maybe they, this is just not going to be. They're not going to. Yeah, it's it's not a failure. The fact that they're not in a certain market not a doesn't big deal. mean that they're failing. Anything. Exactly. So if, if they stayed out of the wearables market, if they stay out of the VR market, that doesn't mean that anybody is passing them by. There's there have been some people who have been, I think, a little bit too impressed by the Google I/O announcements, saying that well, where is Apple's uh, where's yeah. Apple's uh, artificial intelligence? Where's Apple's natural language uh, processor that's uh, moving beyond Siri? They can do very very well for themselves and. Uh, even create new ground ahead of themselves without getting into the same spaces that everyone else is getting into. And that's despite the fact that other people are doing really wonderful work in VR. So, so uh, it's it's not a failure for them not to not to bother with uh, markets that don't personally interest them. And who knows, in five years, they may look back and say, oh, we dodged a bullet. That VR thing really was a waste of time. Well, I, mean, yeah, really I think that's that completely possible, right? I, I think about that year at uh, when I went to... Uh, uh, a Mobile World Congress in Barcelona, and it seemed as though one out of every five phones had some sort of 3D lens right. set up on it. Yes. <laughs> and it's like, even then you could say that, okay, that's a nice gimmick. It's a, it's a nice party trick if you're at the bar to try to impress a person of your, uh, of your approved uh, target gender with this wonderful feature of your phone. That will be a nice feature, but it Went nowhere after about a year. I, I, again, cleaning out the office, I, I hit the. It's, it really is like archaeology, like in certain drawers and closets where I hit the box where I put all the stuff. The uh, had all the stuff from like two thousand nine or whatever of like all the LG and Samsung devices that were sent, but they didn't want back because they canceled them after like two or three months. So I have like a collection of Android 2.2 tablets that, that take really, really wonky 3D pictures uh, that you can't really do with anything. And it, it really is one of those Ozymandias, look upon my works, <laughs> you mighty in despair uh, sort of things. Do you think, Renee, it's fair to say that Apple knows who it is and what it is? And uh, it's, I mean, I, I think under Steve Jobs, Apple knew what it was. It's Steve Jobs' company. But now that Apple does know who it is and is and is comfortable enough in their role to say, yeah, we're not going to chase the gaming market. We're not going to chase the VR market. 
Yeah, uh, Steve Jobs absolutely did that. And Tim Cook has done that very well as, as well. Horace Dedia coined it the Tim Cook doctrine, where uh, he said that they look at markets and they have the luxury of a lot of money so they can investigate and prototype uh, the heck out of these markets. But they really want to make sure that they enter markets uh, with a lot of thought in, as to how they can make a difference. And for Apple, that means that they can deploy a product at scale that helps make that product mainstream and accessible to the market in, in a way that has never been done before. And even if it's a super interesting technology, if they can't do those things, if they can't meet those criteria, they're happy to say no. Uh, they said a thousand no's for every yes, and that means they literally have to try a, like a thousand different labs and experiments and prototypes to figure out that one thing they're going to ship, like a watch or uh, like a, maybe a car one day. And there's a lot of things they never ship, like television sets. Uh, and that's that's core to their culture. I mean, people told them if they didn't do netbooks, they'd be done. If they didn't do this or that device, they'd be done. Uh, people now, I have friends who uh, have, you know, HTC Vive or Oculus, and they're like, this is so compelling. If Apple doesn't do this, they're done. This one's different. Uh, but everyone is different. And I think Apple, uh, for me, the concerning part with Apple is when, when and if they ever did become reactionary and just start throwing out unfinished products to sort of keep up with what everybody else is doing. I think well, you're right. I think that, the, uh, I think that uh, that's something very hard to do, even in a company this small. It's hard to look at something and say, is that who we are? Is that something we want to pursue it's FOMO. or not? And I think, yes, yeah, FOMO, fear of missing out. And I think if, you're, if you look at Google or Microsoft, they clearly have difficult times saying, oh, no, we're not going to do that. They, I, don't, I disagree you know, with that. No, you agree. I, I, no, I disagree. I totally, I, totally, I totally disagree with that. Yeah. Um, there's a difference between uh, calling your shot with a great amount of deliberation and precision and wanting to explore an unfinished product there at some point every great idea is a lump of lump of clay right and you got to start thwacking at it and you can't and because like all art technology is not just the thing itself it's the interaction between that thing and its audience and its user a play is no good if you write it and then go through 10 edits and rehearse it and then don't actually put it in front of an audience um, I, I like Apple and Google for separate reasons. What I like about Google is that they're going to take those risks. They're going to say, we, 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 this idea of having a phone that is made in components that people can simply snap together in and out as they like. We don't know if there's anything to this idea, but it's an interesting idea. Let's try to make it. And the first 10,000 people who buy it are not going to be mainstream buyers. They're going to be people who are fascinated by this idea and are willing to suffer a little uh, along with us are the developers to see how well this works and maybe it will turn out to be nothing but we will learn a lot of stuff and we will become bigger and stronger and happier in our lives and our jobs by having uh, done this experimental stuff and failed um there is there's an argument to me there's there are companies that will literally uh, like uh, samsung is based on the idea of we are a manufacturing company we are not a producer of electronics or home uh, home uh, uh, entertainment stuff we are a manufacturer of things and if there's a thing that we can manufacture, we're going to do that and try to sell it. They really are. Let's throw everything against the wall and whatever sticks, we will make a version 2.0 of that. Uh, uh, that's not what Google does. I think Google just likes to experiment. They are a university where they like to do research. Uh, even they, they've, they've had a little bit of a turnaround in the last year and a half where now famously uh, the new under the new reorganization, there has to be a plan in place where we will give you two years to screw around with this idea. But a couple of years after that, you have to give us a product we can sell to regular people. Uh, but it, it says nothing. It says nothing bad about them that they are they they did Google Glass, and you don't see a Google Glass on one out of every three faces because they learned the things they learned out of Google Glass. They are putting into all the uh, new intelligent things they're doing right now. That they're they're putting into the uh, design of uh, Android five and six. Uh, and it, 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 they learn from it. I would like to see Apple do more things that tell us don't don't just show us things that you think will change the world show show us things that you think are a wonderful waste of time i would love to see the first product that i'd like to if, if they had their 20 percent thing where you are allowed to do uh, spend 20 percent of your time one out of every three years doing something profoundly silly and wonderful that you're excited about and I would like to see a half hour of every uh, uh, every public event given over to at least three of these wonderfully, heroically silly but incredible ideas. The, the, uh, Google pays a little bit of a price, though, for that, looking like they're um, dilettante-ish and, and willing to cancel stuff even if somebody likes it. Uh, Never so, read the comments. 
<laughs> yeah, it's well. well I, mean, I feel that way. Whether it's a, I mean, I don't have to look at somebody's comments to feel that way. I, I'm I'm a little gun shy whenever Google announces a new product about jumping on it because I've been burnt so many times. So I there is a consequence need, to doing that. I, I agree I with you. There's something beneficial to doing it. It's just two, I maybe two different both. ways of doing like, it. Yeah. We benefit yeah. from having both approaches. Like the yeah. Googles and the Samsungs will put a lot of things in the field, and then Apple will take its time, mostly will take its time, and put out a very coherent version of it that doesn't have all the features. But Apple could not uh, do what they do without all the market research done by the companies who do go to market faster. And a lot of, well, people will say this company is copying this or that from Apple. That's the return price they pay. A Apple does the research and comes up with a very simplified version, and then that informs the next iterations of those products. Very different and it's an ways of doing business, yeah. It's an incredibly symbiotic relationship. And when you say Apple should do this, like, you know, Andy's doing it in a very rational way, but some people just say Apple has to do moonshots or Google has to learn to focus. That, that That's not how those cultures work. It's sort of like saying Renee has to have everything in his house that Andy right. has in his house. Right. We're very different. Everything about us is different and that's reflected in how we work and it's good that we have these these sort of differences and johnny i have like he once said and i thought it was a really good statement and johnny i've actually like he talks the way he talks on video that's just that's just johnny i've was that you know he can create all these products and he can put them out on market but it's not until he sees how people use and interact with them that they become real that he starts to understand what they mean and then they iterate from there and that's the same approach they just sort of take it a little bit further down the line of where they see the product before they introduce it so both approaches i think are, are super valuable for us as consumers. So it's probably safe to say that this is not in Apple's uh, future. The backpack computer, this is uh, one of one the, in the lab right now. <laughs> the, one of the many computers being shown at Computex in uh, Taipei today. These are designed for virtual reality helmets. It's a computer you wear on a backpack. Okay, like, what, what if what if we do a case mod so it looks like the Rocketeer is Rocket Pack? <laughs> it kind of does. Then, would you want, I, then, then I would definitely go. <laughs> this is the HP Omen X. Omen, my friends, the, it's a PC, uh, VR PC. This is a development kit. That's actually, the Omen is pretty nice. This is the MSI. Uh, uh, no VGA ports, doomed. No, it's all, all uh, <laughs> HDMI because, of course, it's designed for using yep. with a Vive. But imagine, so no, but imagine this like ruggedized, made out of uh, like, the, the, like a Panasonic tough book, and imagine an architect, a building, a building director, and a couple investors walking through an empty field, and saying, "Here is where, here is what the Ooh, complex is going to look like." With and now your let, let's, virtual reality helmet on. Let's, yeah. let's walk from the parking lot to the main building. Mm -hmm. Oh, actually, you know what? I really love that clump of trees over there. Why don't we just walk around the trees instead of driving? <laughs> I, I'm saying it's. I love it, technology at this stage is invigorating because yeah. you could do anything with it. Nobody there. there there's not been the rule books uh, set yet that if you want to make money with a virtual reality rig, here's what here are the people who are buying it, and so here is what they want you to make uh, with it. It's like no. You can just think that wouldn't it be nice if we could do this? Wouldn't it be nice to? I'm sure that artists and sculptors have not been saying, I wish I could spend $5,000 for a magic wand so that I could do 3D <laughs> uh, three D sculptures made out of light that I have to be wearing a $3,000 thing on my face to even see and I can't display it anywhere. But let's build that right now. Since there's no one buying it, let's build it. It'll be awesome. And the people who get to use it will get so excited by this technology that they'll have ideas of their own. And 10 years from now, the people who are ancient and old, because now they're 40 instead of 30, will not be able to imagine what the 20-year-olds are coming up with when they uh, they start to have their minds uh, warped by this from an early, early age. This is, this is why virtual reality is incredibly wonderful, not because it's commercial, but because it is just a grove of trees and we're about to set off in front of there, and we could find damn near anything inside that that forest. Uh, I love this article. Ben Einstein, who is a product designer and uh, now a VC at Bolt VC. No, you can't <laughs> manufacture that like Apple does. A word of warning to startups, hardware startups, who say, you know, we want to do it just like Apple does. He says, Apple can do it because <laughs> they're Apple. Apple is an exception to nearly every rule, he says. What happened when Apple wanted a CNC uh, machine, a million MacBook bodies a year, those aluminum, you know, unibodies? Yeah. They bought 10,000 CNC machines to do it. When they wanted to drill laser holes in MacBook Pros for the sleep light, but only one company made a machine that could drill those 20 micrometer holes in aluminum, it bought the company and took all the inventory. <laughs> so he said, here's what you should, as a startup, don't be putting this in your pitch deck, kids. White plastic. No. 
White is often uh, the most difficult color to mold. If you need to use white, you never have two separately molded white on white parts. Even Apple learned this when they wanted to make a white iPhone. Remember, it was delayed. Mm -hmm. cause they, they, but then they solved it, right? And yeah. just because Apple has doesn't mean you can. CNC machining at scale. It's fantastic for prototypes. Pretty awesome for high margin parts like hip implants and turbine blades. Not for consumer devices. Figure out a way to cast your metal parts. <laughs> don't look at the, what Apple's doing. Don't look at don't don't look at that. Laser drilled holes. Invisible laser drilled holes are far more difficult to make than it may seem. You can usually accomplish a similar look and feel without the complex secondary operation if you're willing to sacrifice a bit. Molded plastic packaging, harder and more expensive than you might think. Recycled cardboard is your friend. No ejector pin marks unless you're a billionaire genius. Your product will have noticeable ejector pin marks. <laughs> Apple does it, Embr don't, but embrace the embrace the marks, my friends. Most consumers don't know what in the hell an ejector pin mark is anyway. But this is my favorite one: four color double walled matte boxes with HD foam inserts. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Apple's boxing is amazing. You don't even want to throw them away. He says, "I know you're going to do this anyways, but be prepared." These kinds of boxes will literally be the most expensive line item on your build of materials. It's not unusual for them to cost upward of $12 each at scale. At scale! And then they get thrown away. I love this. No disagreement, I imagine, from either of you on, no. <laughs> on his points. <laughs> it's it, Apple's Apple's brilliant because that's really part of their brand. It's part yeah, of the experience yeah. of owning an Apple product, and but and it's and it's not as though uh, any of the competing makers are wrong by putting uh, a headphone jack <gasps> in a in a device or having an eject hole because people don't necessarily people are not going to make a buying decision based on oh my god that look look at that sim e e ejector pinhole like i'm almost i almost want to throw up on the device and would actually improve it <laughs> as we cover up that ejector pinhole but, none the, but nonetheless it, there is a and and yeah i i have a pile of boxes that are worthy of keeping and, yeah but they're uh, just apple, boxes apple, Apple boxes are. I I found myself holding this thing and it's like, am I really going to do this? It's not just not just the box that my Apple Watch came in, but the protective outer cart like uh, brown cardboard box that was that that the box was shipped in is in itself one of the best plain cardboard recyclable brown boxes I've ever seen. It's I I'm not joking when I say that I would love to spend if if I had a choice between. Five the uh, five Apple executives and just whoever it is who's in charge of designing and arranging Apple boxes. I can if you name the top five Apple executives, I think that I would say no to two of them if I could get a uh, get an hour with the with the box designer instead. <laughs> uh, Johnny, uh, well, Johnny, Johnny starts. It starts with Johnny, right? And it started actually with Steve, who said, "Let's let's really pay yep. attention to this." And they have an incredible Marcoms department that does a lot of that stuff. Really, that's a marketing. Yeah. Of course, it is, right? You, you hold you hold the box upside down, about like <laughs> no pressure, no pressure on the sides, really, no pressure on the bottom, and there's such a tight seal that air fall. cannot get out yeah. of it. It will not open. Yeah. And you're like, <laughs> yeah. and, even, and even when you you see, oh, oh, here it is, it's about to fall. All that happened was that like one edge of it like shifted maybe two millimeters but the, the the tolerances are so tight that now that one millimeter made it jam now and it will not oh my goodness i have so much respect for uh putting so much work into something that someone is going to save but they're not going to really be interacting with it 60 times a day like they are with it makes me feel guilty i break down apple boxes all the time and i feel so like i'm not going to keep I them it's a box eBay them. I bet you can. I bet you can eBay. Apparently, I, people I, do I, eBay them. And, and I just. I have a collection. If you need. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I hate throwing them out. I feel guilty because they are beautiful. But I. But at their. At the end of the yeah. day, they're just the box. I just know that if I ever throw one away, the, the device is going to have a problem. I'm going to be yeah, asked to send it, it back. I'm going to yeah. scramble for a box. No, but that's the problem. Is Apple has never asked me for the box ever. You bring it to the store, they don't say where's the box. No. <laughs> Uh, uh, by the way, there's a great, there's a great passage video. in Walter Isaacson's uh, biography of Steve Jobs where they talk about this, and uh, Johnny Ives talking about it, and Steve saying, you know, we want to make the first experience of the device a, 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 a oh, moment, and the way to do that is present it in the packaging. And so it's all designed around this theatrics of the, pres the first time you see your new loved one in the box. That's a, that, that is an important thing. I, I wonder if they would...
consider extending that to even like the in-store purchase bit. The only I uh, I have now bought two, maybe three MacBooks uh, in Apple stores, and they've always been uh, uh, actually let's let's call it let's call it one more because the the my iPad Pro cost a thousand bucks. I've always I've always felt a little bit let down that I didn't even. They didn't even have me walk more than eight feet into the store. I was met at the door because it's time for me to bu either buy or pick up my well, the thing that I ordered, and it was oh oh, oh that's right the oh that's right it's a uh, th thirteen inch uh, MacBook Pro oh, yeah da, 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 so twenty two twenty two hundred dollars and yes it's all right just wait right here and then they call into the radio and make small talk with me for a minute and a half and then I'm handed a plastic bag a nice plastic bag with the twenty two hundred dollar computer and I'm on my way. And it's nice and efficient, but I don't want I don't want to be sat down and being given cocoa and pet and and, and finger sandwiches. But I just bought another twenty two hundred bucks, man. Do I do I get to sit down? When, when I bought when I got my uh, Google Glass, <laughs> can I, I was, have a cup I, of tea, please? <laughs> I went. To, it was a my, for my Google Glass. It was less much less expensive than that, and it was a concierge experience where someone was assigned to me for forty five minutes to walk me through it and demonstrate it and fit it and. Coke and real glass bottles that was served. I buy table bottle service, and it's like I feel like okay. I feel not not quite so bad about spending fifteen hundred dollars on a beta product now because it's. I feel as though they're making me feel okay. Well, I, that's at least worth a, a bottle of Coke that cost us eighty nine cents at Costco. Yeah. So I, I would I would like them to at least here is here is the the pickup experience is if you'd like to sit and wait. We also have again here's moist towelette a moist towelette. Something. I do admit, I do admit that I have yelled at producers who have opened the packages for me for products to review, saying, "No, no, yes. that's not that's not your job. Let me open my own gosh darn packages." Uh, at the other, on the other hand, I kind of wish Apple would at least give you. Uh, it feels very. I don't know. It feels a little uh, high end and um, kind of rude. I wish they'd give you a choice of as as Amazon, for instance, does. Of can I just have it in like recyclable, uh, night, you know, inexpensive. Fold it newspaper. Feel yeah, yeah, Just you wrap go. it in a newspaper. I'll take it because I feel. Fish and chips, MacBook. I feel it's it's a little ostentatious almost, and it, and it's very much you know a, a consumption thing. You know, I don't, it's not a it's it, it's. I, I mean, I, it's not like you buy a laptop every. It's meant to be a moment of zen. The the theme of a lot of the shows that we do is that we aren't we happy that there's so many different approaches from company to company. True. Uh, I, I I like the fact that there are other companies that. Are uh, Amazon packages and stuff generally in corrugated boxes, even the 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 uh, the, the Fire uh, tablets? And it seems to say, we know that you will enjoy. If we spent an extra ten dollars on this box, you would have enjoyed it. It would have made you feel good for about twelve seconds, right? And then you throw it away. We think we you'd much rather have the extra twelve dollars to spend on books and music or maybe a burrito. So I'm glad that there are these other. It's, There's when, a when choice. You look at a Nexus phone, yeah. When you look at a Nexus 5X compared to an iPhone 6, it's hard to say that the iPhone 6 is objectively a better phone, even though it costs uh, two or three hundred dollars more than the 5X. They did things like instead of a, a really beautiful aluminum body, it's a plastic body, but a really, really well done plastic body. Instead of things being done where you can't see a single seam anywhere, okay, if you want to look, okay, yes, there's a seam here and there, but you're probably, we know that you're probably going to be putting it in a protective rubber case anyway, so there goes the advantage of the seam. So I, I like the fact that there are different approaches to, uh, to with uh, different models. <sighs> Likewise. So just to prove that Apple isn't perfect, Ben. <laughs> <gasps> Apple like Music. We're about, we're about to talk about Apple Music, aren't we? No, actually, we're going to talk about <laughs> Apple Pay. Uh, ben Thompson oh. made an interesting point on the talk show, on Gruber's talk show last week. He's saying Apple blew a huge, a massive opportunity to promote Apple Pay better last fall. Merchants across the U.S., of course, uh, had to upgrade their, their point-of-sale uh, hardware to support PIN and uh, this new system. Gene Munster, and by the way, this Philip Elmer DeWitt has combined these two facts. It did some calculations. He thinks, now we know Gene sometimes gets things wrong, but he thinks that only about 20% uh, of new iPhones have activated Apple Pay. Uh, there's also, of course, um, you know, the anecdotal evidence that you just don't see people, uh, not just an Apple Pay, but any touch to pay, you just don't see people using those systems very often. Um, and, and so the question is, 
is it a, is was it a missed opportunity for Apple? Should they have, you know, taken advantage of this uh, great liability shift and uh, and and got yes. more Apple? Because I and you, I'm sure it would agree with this. If you're using the card with the new chip and pin system or the chip and sign system, it's not convenient. You have to put the card in and leave it in, and it takes a while. It's slow, and I've Apple Pay is much lately. faster. <laughs> You've been doing it for yeah. a long time, but so. You know, I I now understand maybe your enthusiasm for Apple Pay because for us a swipe of a card isn't the hardest thing in the yeah, world. Yeah, we still have to use chip and pin for tips because Tap to Pay doesn't have a tipping system yet. So if you had a restaurant or any other place that expects gratuities, they, there's just no tap and pay system for that. So you're still doing pin and chip, and we've just gotten so used to it because it's been five, ten years. It's just like I've never signed anything, so I don't, I barely remember it. But you know, Ben has a really good point. But it goes back to that culture thing. Apple uh, did miss an opportunity, but Apple was not culturally positioned to take advantage of that. Apple has always been. A, we'll take care of the top line and the bottom line will sort of take care of itself. And you've seen that, like Apple has a handful of evangelists. When BlackBerry 10 launched, I think they had 300. Microsoft has had you know, dozens and hundreds of evangelists. They, they just put a lot of boots on the ground. And Apple historically has not done that. So uh, a non-Apple company might have had, you might have hired uh, just dozens and dozens, hundreds, maybe thousands of people to go literally store to store and to have signs ready for them and branding and training right. and all of these things. Uh, and it's the same thing we've heard like Apple Music, they might have hired uh, marketing assistants to actually sit with every star and help them, you know, do connect for at least six months on a day-to-day -day basis to launch it. But it's just not something, I don't even think Apple thinks about that stuff. Or if they do, it's not at a level where they believe they can implement it because that that is, that would require a very different sort of mindset. So absolutely a blown opportunity, but it's it's just, that's technically the way Apple does it. HomeKit too, uh, they have a really good program, but there's nobody out there with manufacturers really giving them the market doing the stickers, doing the awareness, going around showing people whatever health uh, home kit can do. Alternatively, I go to the mall and there's a Samsung kiosk up there with people just walking by trying to show you their right. latest product. It's kind of ironic. Apple invented ev product evangelism with Guy Kawasaki many moons ago. One, one guy. Kawasaki. Well, one guy, right. <laughs> it was easier then. It was a small, Blackberry evangelist. It was I mean, a smaller, a different, yeah. smaller uh, market. You agree, Andy? Did Apple miss, a, miss an opportunity? Uh, I don't know. I think that they did a much better job that than Google and other manufacturers did because yeah, because Android Pay was out a long time before Apple Pay, right? Exactly. I, I, Nobody I, even I, knew it I, existed. I'm always uh, amused and debased to admit that uh, I used Google Wallet uh, on my Nexus Five phone that had NFC and worked with Tap to Pay and would have worked on every single one of these stores that I was testing out Apple Pay on. And it wasn't until Apple Pay came out that it, that reminded me that, oh, this thing exists and I can actually use it on my day-to-day -day Android phone. So I don't, uh, and the other problem I have, uh, the other thing is that I'm wondering how much more they could have done to get the word out about it. Uh, it's, it'd be nice if every single person who owns an iPhone was using tap to pay or were using the, all the capabilities of their device. It would be wonderful if people were to switch phones because they, they love this uh, feature uh, that is, they think is only available on this one device. But um, it's, it's difficult when you uh, have to face the fact that People who own iPhones are just one section of the entire community of people who spend who spend money on things. Uh, I, uh, uh, if you spend more time on noticing the devices that are people are using on subways, uh, on commuter rail, on buses, uh, in the universities, and everywhere that people hang out, you will see that the iPhone is a, probably the most noticeable phone out there, but it's only part of that ecosystem out there. So... Uh, how, there's a limit to how much of the people spending money market that they can actually uh, actually capture. I think they did a great job. I think that people are as more people start to age out and in, into the system, more people are going to be using tap to pay. I think just the simple thing of being behind somebody who drops their uh, I, I always throw, I, I, I one out of every five times that I use tap to pay uh, on my Android phone, I wind up evangelizing the concept to the people behind me because they see me just drop the phone like on top of the pad uh, at my, at the drugstore at the pharmacy and just do nothing and then when I hear a beep I just I just pluck it off of there 
and say, what, what did you just do? I just paid for, oh, okay, can you look at my phone? What, what, what kind of phone do you have? I have, oh, yep, yeah, that's right. That's a built-in feature. You just, uh, I can't, I, I think you'd much rather pay for that yogurt that's about to go bad if I'm going to tell you the entire history of contactless payments. But <laughs> believe me, if you were to do a Google search for the name of your phone and contactless payments, you will learn that and since it's, it's, it's a scene, man. You should it may that. be that we're just, uh, old habits die hard and we're just not that interested. I don't yeah, know if that's it's fully Apple's fault. That's it. That's it, too. People, uh, credit cards that work fine. Cash works fine. You have to identify a pain point for people where they feel as though, it, my God, it's such a horrible uh, breach of my time and my patience to have to actually hold out a $20 bill and get change back. Yeah, uh, exactly. it's, I, I use it all the time because I just like it. I just it's, it's less fuss. It's more secure. I like the fact that I get digital receipts that are a lot easier to track for me than uh, uh, than, of course, uh, using cash. But if it's working for other people, you're telling, please abandon, please abandon this thing that you're using that you trust that you know to something that you don't necessarily trust yet, and you have to. There, there, there's always remember that there's, there's always that uh, 0.75 to 1.3 seconds where you're not 100% sure that the <laughs> that the that the end of, that the payment system is going to go through because it's it's just a, just that pause where oh my god is this is this like a kiosk where it has the logo on the reader but they don't have the software turned on am i going to look like an idiot because i just put my phone in this thing expecting magic to happen so yeah i mean, I, I, have, I, I have i have some touch to pay system on me at all times i yeah. rarely use it i mean this samsung pay even works with swipe machines and i still rarely use it it's just that like i don't trust i just swipe i it. use it all the time now because i'm so paranoid that all my all my credit cards and debit cards have had tap to pay for five years and my greatest fear is i will drop it at a gas station and pay for gas for the next t seven or ten people in line right. so this to me is so much better because it's either my thumbprint or my pulse and if it loses either of those things it no longer works uh, and that to me is just much more secure oh i mean there's no question it's better and more secure it's just not better enough. And that's why I thought maybe Canadians and others who have to do the, have had to do the dip and chip thing. <laughs> maybe for them, maybe for you, it's a, it's a, it's just a little bit more of a hurdle to not use Apple Pay. Maybe that's enough to push you into it. But, but our but, problem was the banks. The banks took, like the banks are just forever. now, uh, three yeah. banks have started adopting it. My right. bank hasn't. So I have my, uh, I, I can't, I have the American Express, but most places here don't take American Express tap. Uh, so three banks have started. Another three banks are going to start mid-June, uh, and then we'll see. But it's still at the point where, I mean, McDonald's takes it. A bunch of other places you, takes it. And when I use it, they're still, oh, my God, I've never seen that before. That's the coolest thing in the world. Yeah. But until it becomes routine, then it's not really part yeah. of mainstream culture. And who wants to have that conversation? Uh, <laughs> do you think in 10 years uh, it'll just be, we'll all just use tap to pay, and that'll be that? And it was just, you know, it just took a while. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I think I so, think too. So. Okay. There's, remember that uh, we're, we're so beholden to that first generation that grew up with a technology that once we have the first generation that when they have their first bank account that they're used to simply pay that's that's how you buy that's how you buy things that cost less than forty dollars you always just take out your phone uh, to pay for it this is why this is the first generation that really understood uh, the capabilities of messaging on a smartphone and why you weren't limited to voice and text uh, it became part of their lifestyle because that's how they learned how to talk to each other so no it's true uh, when we when credit cards first came out nobody used them. When ATMs yeah. first emerged, nobody used them. I remember I was kind of, uh, I, w I used home banking on Bank of America when it was a f 20 by 40 display with black, white text on a black screen, even though I was using a graphical, you know, I was using a Mac and I used it. And it just takes a while. That's all. Now it's everybody funny. does, you know, ATMs and. I had relatives who would not use online banking and then right. very slowly they got an online banking, but then they would print everything out yeah. because they were just used to having a paper <laughs> copy a, and they didn't want to not get the paper statement. bills in the mail because right. they thought that they would miss them. But then they heard this report about identity theft, uh, people stealing the paper bills and, to, and then that scared them into going fully online. It took something that really made them afraid to get that point of transition going. And we're, and we're all like that. There, there was for years I wouldn't deposit. I wanted every time I wanted to deposit a check, I had to go to a teller to do it because I didn't. There was something about feeding it into the ATM and simply here is a number on the screen that says that we have recognized this as a check that I didn't like. And now I'm sort of trying to get my head around the idea: should I use the phone feature I do to that all the deposit time now. checks? By That's phone. how I deposit yeah. my checks. I'm not. I'm not quite there yet. You know what happened? My bank. I work. I bank with USAA, and they used to if it was more than. What was it? Five thousand? I can't remember what it was. There was a limit. If it was a large check, you had to you had to bring it somewhere. In my case, the UPS store <laughs> to deposit it. So I would make a monthly trip to the UPS store to deposit my paycheck, and uh, 
just like a month ago, I went to the UPS store. They said, no, they turned it off. Yeah. <laughs> I said, what? Oh, that's a pain. Now what do I have to do? Mail it to Texas? And they said, no, no, they raised the uh, ante. Now you can, now I can deposit up to $100,000 via a uh, picture on my phone. I don't know what the holdup was. A picture is a picture, right? It's still, I mean, yeah. when you cash a check, I don't think. I, but I, I, I just have such sympathy for those people who didn't understand ATMs and, yeah. and, and credit cards because it's like, wait a minute. So I, the same mechanism I use <laughs> To take a picture of my <laughs> hoagie and put it on Instagram <laughs> will take this thousands of dollars that I have and, it's a, and actually turn it into I. It's just whether I, they take I, a I picture at the leave. bank or you take the picture. It's the same either way. It's still a picture of a check that's going out to the whoever it is the clearance the clearance house. All right. Anyway, uh, let's uh, take a break. More to talk about. Renee Ritchie from imore.com. How's that Apple Talk podcast going these days? Going well. Oh, yeah, really great. Uh, we just had Carolina, Carolina Milanese, who was at Google I.O., to talk about digital assistants and the difference between those with personality and without, with oh. APIs and without, with, interna oh. with international we'll and without. And we should be doing VR this week. Very that interesting. Yeah. yeah, it strikes me with the progress that we're making. Google's trying this out in the South Bay. We won't need a watch or a phone or a credit card. It'll just see you, and it'll use whatever cues it uses to, because it's all about authentication. They'll say, oh, hi, Leo. I'm wearing my Nixon mask right now. Right. Google has a thing <laughs> where um, you just say your initials. This is only in, 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 like at McDonald's and IHOP or something in the South Bay in Silicon Valley next in Mountain View. But you just say, they say, okay, what well, are your initials? LGL. Okay, fine. You're done. Yeah. My voice is yeah. my passport. Right. It, it, it sees your phone in your pocket and it exactly. realizes that that's, that's, it, they can authenticate the actual device itself. Isn't it amazing? And I mean, but that's really the end game. All of this is intermediate technology. Yeah. The, the, the perfect Google product is at the precise intersection point between amazing, and miraculous, creepy. near magic, <laughs> and, and creepy. Exactly. <laughs> That's the exact point. Those, those two you, really want that, you really want Google's that. that we, go, we go right up to the creepy line, but stop. Yes. RR, Renee, do you really want another hamburger? Oh, I'm sorry, Google. I'll leave now. And I do use, you know, somebody's pointing out, you can now use voice or facial recognition to log into your banking app on your phone. I, uh, and uh, so there, we're getting there. We're getting there. Yeah. Andy Anako is also here. He does a podcast called Material where he does talk about Google on replay. Uh, the replay dot. Is it replay dot FM? Replay dot FM. Yeah. No static at all. No relay. No static at all. Oh, sorry. Re relay. Sorry. Relay. FM. Oh, crap. I can't, you know. Okay. Now I got the FM right, but I got the relay part. I didn't wrong. want Mike Hurley coming after us. That was I know. <laughs> no. Relay dot FM and Material podcast all about Google. That must be dis disorienting for people who are used to you on Mac Break Weekly all of a sudden. Well, it's it's kind of fun because uh, it, it, we, what we we record both shows in the same day, so it's nice that like while we're recording Mac Break, there'll be tweets like, "Oh my God, what Apple? Andy is such an Apple hater. Why is he on the Mac show?" And then I'll be recording <laughs> material. My God, Apple's such a Google hater. He's already ta always talking about Apple. Why is he on? Why is he on a Google show? What are you Which do? means that I. I'm, I'm doing fine. You're, no, I'm saying... It's Leo's I'm life and welcome to it. You're walking the fine line between <laughs> creepy and cool. That's all you got to do in life. Yep. Uh, we'll Good have life. more in just a bit. If you're a magazine fan, you know, magazines, I think, are still the last bastion of really great print journalism. I, with all due respect to the Chicago Sun-Times, the fine newspaper you you work for, I, I, I don't know how... I guess, I guess the big newspapers will survive, but... The, I gosh, I hope there's always a Vanity Fair and a Rolling Stone and a Wired. And these magazines are so great. There's almost every month there's an article I want to read in the New Yorker, every week in the New Yorker, uh, the, a, a picture, a photo essay I want to see in National Geographic. The problem is if you were to subscribe to all of these, not only would the cost be out of control, but you'd have paper everywhere. Your coffee table would break with the burden. And if I feel guilty recycling boxes, imagine how I feel throwing out 100 magazines every month. You could buy it on the newsstand. That would just talk about cost going through the roof. That would be crazy. So here's what I recommend and what I use now, and I love it. It's called Texture, and it's like Netflix for magazines. You can binge read. Really great if you travel because instead of bringing a, you know, a half dozen magazines with you, you bring your iPad or your iPhone or your tablet, and you've got it. And by the way, all the magazines, I mean everything, it's fantastic. 
Men's Health and Wired and Interviewed and The New Yorker and Vogue and Esquire. And what's nice is I probably would never get Vogue, ever. But there's something in there that I would enjoy, you know? Rolling Stone. I know there's always one article I, re I want to read every month. Uh, People Magazine. I, know, I, I feel guilty buying it, but don't you want to know? Steve Harvey's story from homeless to $100 million? You do want to know that. I know you do. And see, this way you can read it kind of surreptitiously. And, and if the, your spouse comes in the room, you just jump back to Wired Magazine. Sports Illustrated, everything. And then this is every page in the current issue, every page, and back issues, and stuff that you don't get in the magazine, like bonus content like video. So this is such a good deal. One flat rate, all the magazines. You can find new stuff, too, with their top stories and new and noteworthy sections. These are curated by actual human beings. Editorial team is really good there, and you can really get, get deep into subjects or people. Uh, star your favorite magazines. That adds them instantly to your personal library, so you're always ready to read. I want you to try it free right now. Texture, T-E-X-T-U-R-E, -E, Texture. Get it text here dot com slash Mac break and get that free trial today. I think you're going to love it. It really is a great solution. If you like magazines and I'm glad magazines still, exist. did you ever write yeah. for magazines, Andy? Oh yeah. All the time. Yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, I, one, of the, one of the most fun interactions I ever had was, uh, uh, I was, uh, selling, uh, I was sell selling a lot of features to playboy and my, uh, and my mom didn't know how to express her pride <laughs> in that. <laughs> That's pretty so, good, actually. Yeah, it was. It, it, but they were absolutely hands down one of the best magazines I ever wrote for. You, you've written so, articles so for Playboy. Wow. I've I've had I've had artwork published in Playboy. That's on my. What? That's on my. Yeah, I, there was a, uh, a article where I, I needed to explain something very very technical, and I decided I, I still have the artwork upstairs somewhere where I just basically decided to write do a cartoon explaining how it worked or and we, i talked to it with my editors oh well, what, if you just like do it like in stick figures or something uh our, we'll our get an illustrator will, to do it yeah we'll, we'll, we'll yeah. do it so i basically cartooned the whole thing and they said actually our illustrator will just trace over this in illustrate <laughs> or don't nice. illustrator oh, and so i could say i've got i have i've had my artwork published in playboy no there's certain things if you're a writer you know getting published in uh, there's certain like new yorker uh, Playboy's absolutely on mm -hmm. that list of like super prestigious. You're up there with Norman Mailer kind of yeah. life also, uh, goals. They, I think that's fantastic. I had no idea. Also, also the editing process there is it feels it really does feel like this is what it must have been like in the '60s to uh, uh, to yeah. uh, be like Gates, Gates and or something days. because yeah. they're, 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 they're the back and forth between the editor and the real sacredness of every sentence. And then the, <laughs> this is the, the first and only time that I had I was writing for a magazine that had like a hundred like uh, international editions because number one they would pay me a great amount of money for this feature article, and then for the next four months there'd be other huge checks. Oh, we we sold it to we sold it to the English edition. We we sold it to the, the the French edition. We sold it to the Dubai edition. We sold it to the to the Brazilian edition decided to take your your article too, and it's like my God, it's like it's every writer's dream to get paid for stuff that you didn't technically have to write or translate yourself. It's nice. Anyway. It was those those were the days, uh, um, and of course, Andy. Oh, many and people and don't know was the 1974 gatefold. Uh, I think Mr. May in Playboy magazine. That was a lot of waxing, but you know what? They made, <laughs> they made me feel like I could really express that side of myself. It was a, it was a place of peace and safety. And yeah, yeah, I'm just glad that they got me when at my figure when I was 23. That's how I got started in this business. Was writing. Uh, I think my first piece was in either Infoworld or Byte, and it was a. Uh, and then I wrote some Atari magazine pieces too, but I felt pretty good when I got a piece in Byte magazine. I felt like. I'm done. Oh yeah, no, that no, that's that's uh, my my first my first published anything was in Soft Talk magazine, Soft the Apple Talk. II magazine. Yeah, uh, that was that was just like a contest entry that they summarize and was so, imagine like being like in junior high and seeing your name in this wow. magazine that you run to the mailbox to get every single month. And then I, uh, but actually I, I shouldn't give short shrift. I, my first real work was at Mac user, uh, started my first stuff in 1989. I remember wow. it was 1989 because I got, they gave me a, a column and I remember it was 1989 because a uh, real, <laughs> real optimistic guy thinking, okay, well, if it takes them five columns for the editors to find out I'm a total fraud, I can at least put 
Mac User Magazine columnist 1989 through 1990 on the resume, and they don't know it was just October, November, December, January. <laughs> By the way, yes. Magazines. Yay, magazines. Yay, magazines. Uh, moving on. iPhone error 53 plaintiffs. No, I don't No. Nope, 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 nope. nope. <laughs> Not going to talk about it. Not going to talk about it. Uh, what's the upshot on the bricking? Uh, speaking of errors, error, what is it, error 56? Yeah, special order 56, kill all the stormtroopers. Uh, did the Apple update the uh, iOS they update? Pull, yeah, they, they pulled, pulled it. it and then they released a new version. Okay. And nobody's getting bricked. What do we know? Was, what brick? I mean, it was I? I put it on my iPad Pro, no problem. What do we know? It was what, the nine point seven inch specifically, uh, uh -huh. and it's it, it generated a hardware error. So I'm not quite sure what yeah, that see, was. I put it on my nine seven before I read that, yep. and I didn't have a problem. Me too. Yeah. Okay. So, whatever. It's it fixed small now. It's always a small percentage of users, but at Apple scale, that is millions of users. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Thousands, thousands exactly. Of Fox. Cares about Go ahead. I was going to say, so who cares if it's millions of people? If it's you, <laughs> that's all it takes. Yeah. Just, yes. Just one. Foxconn is replacing 60,000 workers with robots. Uh, I don't know if they'll be making iPhones. Foxconn, of course, is the... Um, does Foxconn make all the iPhones? I think uh, so. There's an... Yeah, I mean, there's another supplier that uh, occasionally does Apple orders, but I think Foxconn gets this line, line share of them most of the time. Yeah. So how do you feel about that? On the one hand, you know, we've been complaining about difficult working conditions, child labor, whatever, suicides at Foxconn. Uh, now they're going to use robots. Was it was it worse having a low-paying, horrible job, but at least you had a job? Well, so now lot, your job is to run the robots. Oh, yeah, there's four <laughs> people to run the robots. <laughs> <laughs> but, but but also to be fair, a lot of this work can't be done by humans anymore. It can only be done by humans sur supervising uh, robots now. Right. So and particularly when you're talking about the uh, imagine Apple is Apple is just one company. Not, we're not just talking about uh, Foxconn's just making uh, making Apple products. But if you imagine the tens of millions of iPhones that that Apple makes that each have to be made and assembled, how many people can you possibly hire to keep up with that kind of demand without automating the crap out of it? Right. So. In, in principle, I don't think that uh, I, I'm, I don't like uh, automation as a cost cutting measure, but there I do recognize there are times where you can't just simply be on the, you know, be on a campaign speech, say, I will talk to these people and make them not hire robots uh, or at least make them use American robots to, to assemble things. Sometimes you have to say, well, we're <laughs> we can't you can uh, look at look at the look at the trans the, the components that are on a phone uh, and say, imagine somebody having to take this one, take a one fourth of a grain of rice and glue it with conductive adhesives in exactly the right place at the right time, 10,000 times a day. No, no. Any, any iPhone 7 uh, rumors we want to uh, disseminate that are worthy of... Uh, uh, always. I seen any. Four speakers, different yeah, colors. Yeah, we talked about that last yeah. week. Yeah, blah, blah. There is a Chinese accessory maker showing a prototype for lightning to phono jack, <laughs> mini jack. <laughs> That's never of any use whatsoever. <laughs> every time, every time you see a rumor of this kind, remember that it's the company announcing to other uh, to right. other uh, distributors, "We will have the ability to build this when this thing is needs to be built." It's not we are we have seen a design and now we're plan making plans based on the design. It's saying we whatever we, we will be able to in in two weeks time have working product in a in, in sh uh, store shelves. So by all means, if you're planning on stocking such an item or carrying such an item in your catalog, keep us in mind because this is the sort of stuff we make. So that, that is the, the uh, phone cases are probably the absolute worst source of Apple rumors. Right. The, next, the next bad source is usually a anal, an analyst without a, a really proven track record. But then the next one above that is uh, iPhone case manufacturers. That's, it's more like I tuned, <laughs> I tuned a radio to a place on the dial that was kind of close to the station but not really and listen to it for 10 minutes and that's the that's the quality of the information you're getting <laughs> well there was the one that went out of business when they went all in on those teardrop sh those teardrop shaped cases oh, for funny. the five or five s but yeah. we i think though i'm going to credit the rumor that they are dropping the headphone port right or is that yeah. still very speculative it feels like that might really be until they hold it up on stage leo everything is speculative. everything's speculative but uh I could I, I, I could see that happening. I, I I can say that I I believe there to be very serious discussions about that 
far beyond the hey of course apple takes apple checks out every right. single possible idea that said though i like like renee say you believe it when you actually see tim cook holding it up uh and not making sure it's not a joke item that's supposed to spout confetti from it saying oh of course we would never build something like this with no headphone jack no come on come on let's, let's bring out the real one let's bring out the real one we do know that uh um Apple wants to put Siri in the next version of OS 10 so that you can talk mm -hmm. to your computer. You know, I already have that in Windows, and I find uh, that I don't use it all that often. Because, uh, you know, when you're using a computer in an office or whatever, you're not likely to talk out loud to it. You're more likely to use the keyboard and mouse. Uh, however, uh, we also know that Google has announced an Amazon Echo-like product, Google Home. It's some rumors that Apple might be looking at something like that. Uh, 9 to 5 Mac says that uh, it could be in, uh, related to the uh, Apple TV. Apple TV could be home for rumored Amazon Echo-like Siri speaker. Uh, VentureBeat says a source has indicated a new version of Apple TV might be a competitor. For yeah, maybe that. a Mac the Siri could be a competitor too if you just happen to have one in your living room. I mean, Apple has a multi-device strategy that I really like because that way the you have your assistant home and the Echo. Though, I mean, part of the secret sauce of the Echo is some specialized microphones that are that beam forming. Uh, yeah, it's uh, so seven microphones are arranged all the way around the thing, and, and also really a lot of it is concept. Where here is a discrete device that is powered on all the time and is place someplace prominently it's not something where you have to hold down a button to make it work it's not something where you have to be near where this computer is to make it work uh it's and it's not uh, mixed in with a device that does 18 different things including being an apple tv uh it is like here is a dedicated appliance that here is somebody who here is an entity that will then listen to what i listen to my instructions and act on those instructions uh so i'm uh, i've uh, even cortana on windows they've it's, I think it's successful because they really have promoted it not as, hey, we've added something to this or we've taken something that's available on one of our other products and we've put it into the desktop. It's, no, we are this this is really a core feature of this thing. We are designed, this is a core part of our interface to Windows 10. Um, I'm not sure how well Siri would work conceptually if if I know that if I hold down the function key, I can speak something. Uh, really, I, I have a I have a, a Alexa in the next room, and the number of times where I actually I have the I have an actual keyboard underneath my fingers, or I've got an actual iPad like underneath my underneath my hands, and I have to do nothing but simply say trigger word what time what time is it right now in in chicago or what's the weather right now or add this to my calendar or actually i, I was watching colombo <laughs> this morning and uh, and i say how what, when was a uh, uh, a certain actress when 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 did she, when was she born and again i have an ipad in my lab i can actually just hold down the home button and ask siri this question but I'm just used to simply doing nothing but saying, asking a question as though my spouse is in the next room and she knows everything and she's tolerant of my just simply barking out questions and giving me answers. So it's it's not just the technology of parsing speech. It's also understanding the way that people want to interact with such a thing. And the right answer might be a dedicated device that you just that just simply always exists. And there, to kind of tie this Janet, all together, yeah, we had... Uh, we had, uh, we had a really good conversation. It's not out yet on a podcast with Nitin Ganatra and Don Melton again. And they were talking about Apple and NFC chips and how for years Apple was experimenting with NFC. And Scott Forrestal said, you know, this is a chip, not a feature. And even like uh, Oppenheimer, who was the CFO at the time, said, you know, just the stuff isn't there for it yet. And they took a couple of years and eventually they didn't really ship NFC. They shipped Apple Pay. And so, you know, you look at Apple working on a hub, one of the Apple TV Apple TV took years to get out and they were like PVR versions and they were hub versions and there were rumors for years about Apple building a device that would just sit there and, you know, stage downloads for you and do all sorts of convenient stuff for you and be the real HomeKit hub. Uh, and in instead, we got the Apple TV we got now. So this stuff is sort of when you see these rumors, Apple's always working on these things. If we can talk about it on a show or someone can blog it on the Internet, a company with billions and billions of dollars can absolutely afford to prototype it. It's always just a question of when they, they go to market with it and how and what form it takes. There is a rumor CNET is uh, promulgating that there might even be a camera in a uh, Echo competitor from Apple. This is all... In prime sense. Uh, who knows? Although I have ordered and I hope to get it sometime. I don't know. I gave them 800 bucks a couple of years ago, so I hope <laughs> to get it sometime soon. This Jibo thing, which has a camera uh, and a screen yeah. in it, and uh, it's very much like an Echo in the sense that you talk to it, it talks to you, but it also will take pictures of you and has some personality and so forth i this is this could i could see this as 
a breakthrough product for Apple, couldn't you? I mean, if you're exploring uh, breakthrough areas, I don't, I don't see the that nuance at all. version I, I, had cameras and beamforming mics, and you would snap twice, and it would lock on you, and then you could talk while going through a crowded room full of noisy people, and it would only identify your voice. But that's a lot of technological overhead for a home hub. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. guess. Yeah, I, I I don't see that kind of device until they until they've got some sort of of side rail ion and uh, uh, propulsion engines so that it could actually hover and follow you around silently. Uh, I I don't see the idea of so long as you're within line of sight of this device, it can turn its head and aim its camera at you. I, I, I don't I really don't see the idea. I don't see the, the 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 plus of having a camera equipped on one of these devices unless you're building it as a chat thing and else unless it has the ability to really steer you uh, steer itself around and uh, and uh, and follow you for conferencing thing. Even so, I just don't see it as a useful feature right now. Even if you were a very lonely uh, eight year old girl who. Didn't have any friends, but had a sleepover with Does your it little sound like Scarlett Johansson? friendly robot. <laughs> it's yeah, see, this is see, the, I, I, that's a great demo video, but this is this is the sort this is the sort of thing you design when you're creating a movie, and you can create any sort of technology, right. and it has to look exact. People have to be able to figure out what this thing is for immediately. They don't figure out that the if it, your your prototypical your hypothetical eight year old lonely girl will find a community a community of other eight to ten year old girls online, and she, they don't need a little robot that swivels its head that it can pretend that this little robot pal is her friend. She can find actual friends anywhere in the world <laughs> what? Uh, and talk about things that are relevant what? to actual. <laughs> So. This this internet is there anything it can't do? <laughs> anyway, I hope I hope you're all wrong, and when I get my Jibo, you're going to be so it's jealous. It's a Cabbage Patch Kid, but with interactive AI. <laughs> Apple considered, according to Nine to Five Mac, buying Time Warner last year. Not true. Not true. Not there true. you go. The end of that one. This is not true. It's wrong. Not true. This is from actually from the Financial Times. Eddie Q raised the idea at a meeting with Time Warner's head of corporate strategy, Olaf Olafsson. That's now you it. could easily see Eddie Q going, "Well, you what know, if we you guys bought you? Around, we'll just buy you." But right. I mean, that is that is a negotiation tactic, not an offer on the table. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we could just buy you. Uh, all right. Be, 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 by the way, worth about because it's not just Time Warner, but it's HBO and CNN. I, worth, I think they took one look at their DC billion. Comics movies and just said, "Pass, hard pass." <laughs> Um, uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> my understanding is it's not true. I mean, I could always be I'm, I'm, Renee, I, I'm biting my tongue here because we can have a <laughs> long, we can have a long discussion about, about, uh, I, I, like, I think that the Marvel movies are like the Android. Oh, I of, thought it was about the Tom Warner movies. thing. You guys no, are fighting because, over no, comic let, books. Let, let right, let, let, I'm just going to just have a little complete, sip of tea. And, let me complete my thought because I want Renee to be properly insulted. <laughs> that it's that the Marvel movies are the ones that make kajillions of dollars and own the mark have has the greatest market share, but they're they're not really all that good. They're not well made. There's not that craftsmanship. You'll see the, there's the the case just the the, the I thought the, Deadpool it doesn't, was it doesn't, very good. Well, that was Deadpool. Fox, Deadpool was the best, maybe the best Marvel movie ever. Yeah. Okay. But early Spider Man, early X Men, but yeah. But you're right. Most of them right now feel like. Cynical attempts to cash fun, in on the market. I, I just want a fun movie. I don't. They don't have to be works of art, but a Glowery Superman is lost on me. So Glowery. I just, oh yeah. I just, I just, I agree I just with want. That. I just want a reason why Iron Man has a Hulkbuster armor and why he's suddenly fighting the Hulk after they were just working together. And just at least put something in there that says, "Here's what we." It's not just because we knew this would look good in the trailer, and also we need another smashy bashy. We had so we had actually eight lines of dialogue, so we need to make up for it. It's the toys and not codes. All about the toys. It's all about the action figures. Can't we just get along? Let's just all get along, you superheroes. Stop. Is, a, stop is an uncontrollable fighting. rampaging engine of destruction that the Avengers have to protect themselves against. But then at the end, because now he needs to be someone that can actually fight the aliens. So hey, Hulk, fight the aliens and don't beat us up. Either she can do. I've always had that control. Hulk Wait a minute. Smash you always for you, had Andy. Control. Okay, I'm sorry. Hulk will smash talk. for you. Hulk smash. <laughs> this isn't Marvel Movie Break Weekly. <laughs> Apple thinking about making electric car charging stations. Now, if you're going to make electric cars, you got to solve this fueling problem. Of course, uh, Tesla famously uh, c considered both important products, a supercharger and the automobile. Uh, there are, this is all leaks. I hate leaks, but this comes from Reuters and their sources. Reuters sources understand that Apple 
is asking charging station manufacturers about the technology for its oft-rumored electric car project. NRG Energy said, well, we're talking to every potential manufacturer of tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, wait till you uh, see the Facebook car, Leo. And the uh, Amazon car, it's free if you do deliveries for them. It's I amazing. I want to be a manufacturer of tomorrow. Are they actually making tomorrow? Yes. In their, in their little elf factories? It is interesting, though, because a car involves so many things that, like, for the phone, you do have to go through the FCC and you do have to go through the carriers, but it's still a pretty contained project. But when it gets to getting legal authorization to put your thing on the road in many countries and having infrastructure in place to support all of that, everywhere from retail to, you know, refueling if it needs special kinds of refueling, that, that is a much larger and much more leaky endeavor. Yeah, and they're actually well. Actually, there is there are some cities that are actually trying to give breaks to companies, saying, "Please, we will we will we will work with you to give you uh, legislation that will allow you to operate driverless vehicles in uh, in our cities, because we really want <laughs> we really want you to build a transportation infrastructure that we ourselves don't necessarily have to pay for." So there's there's a lot of interesting movement here. Although, of course, this is a <laughs> here we are talking about a rumor, uh, not just a rumor of an unannounced an unofficial product or project, but a rumor about an accessory for a rumored accessory about an unannounced product or accessory. Now in Apple hiring news, this is very good news. Uh, John Callis, who uh, founded PGP Corp, Silent Circle and so Black great. Phone, a really uh, prestigious security guy who, by the way, was at Apple in the mm -hmm. 90s during uh, security. And again, between 2009 and 2011, when he designed an encryption system protecting data stored on a Mac. Uh, I guess, I don't know if that's File Vault, but I would guess that is File Vault. He has now been hired, joined, rejoined Apple in uh, this month. And uh, while Apple doesn't say what he'll be doing, I have <laughs> to think it has something to do with hardening its encryption against yeah. uh, Senate He's not the new chef at Cafe Max. <laughs> yes. <let's, laughs> well, I'm sure we'll he's a wonderful cook. Put an end to that rumor immediately. Right <laughs> yeah. Uh, but boy, this guy, I mean, Silent Circle and Black Phone uh, were well respected by the uh, crypto community as a... Uh, real ways to uh, do, uh, uh, you know, encryption that nobody could get into, including governments. So Apple, yeah. I, obviously, continuing along the lines of this. It, this this is a huge revolution that cuts across all companies. Apple is doub doubling down against the against the government, saying we are going to make sure that we are, we are going to protect the phone so hard against ourselves that there is absolutely nothing we can possibly do to help anybody under any circumstances. There's also rumblings that other companies like... Uh, Facebook and Google particularly really want to hire in a lot of these people because they don't want uh, uh, they they want to they want to give their customers the greatest security possible uh, that they them that they themselves still have access to uh, the, the company themselves uh, because one of the problems of hardening security against everybody else means that that's those are users that uh, Google can't see those are users that uh, Facebook can't see uh, and if they basically make things better for their users they also prevent themselves from getting it in the neck uh, but they're also in the same sort of liability situation as as Apple it's not just doing good for their users there's also uh, a lot of uh, good hygiene involved in saying that we do not have the ability, we are not going to be responsible for breaking into our own phones and for harvesting information from our customers that uh, uh, the demands of government and uh, and uh, and other other forces because we simply do not have that capability. You have to have that we are clean hands attitude that says that you are asking us to do something that involves manufacturing a unicorn. We would all like to have one, but we can't manufacture one for you. You have to figure out how to make that horse fly on your own. Actually, I've uh, already ordered a, a unicorn. Toots, the flying rainbow farting <laughs> unicorn, and I should be getting that soon. Uh, it was an Indiegogo uh, project. I, I would, I would like to think that that's one of the no's uh, that Apple <laughs> said, or the <laughs> thousand no's that led to good ideas. Uh, well, we, you know, I, I couldn't resist. Actually, the the creator of Toots, the unicorn, um, brought him by the uh, studio the other day, and golly, they're so close. To their uh, to their goal at ninety one percent of their goal and sunshine Perfect. and once I'm connected to the internet I'll let you know when important things happen the only way a unicorn knows how it uh, I can check it, Twitter for your notifications as well as that's, your favorite that's, hashtags that's, that's if you enjoy exactly Twitch what, I can announce when your you favorite think streamers is. go live or if you get a new subscriber <laughs> or a donation you simply set me up on your smartphone or in a browser this, this is going to be all the rage on Twitch kids at launch I'll be ready for Twitter Twitch Facebook and Gmail. With new services being added every day. We're thinking Tell that uh, every every time you, somebody I'll do what sends us a nice best. tweet, we'll have toots Rainbow. just announce it. 
Yabba dabba do. <laughs> yeah, that's what Gibson does. Yeah. Uh, I have a farting unicorn, my friends. Uh, anything else that we missed before we take a break and go to our back of the book, our final thoughts and uh, picks? Mm. Beautiful day outside. Yeah, it's lovely day. <laughs> lovely day. And I'm that wearing tie dye. What more could you ask for? You are too. Hey, you found your B mug shirt. Yep. We're twinsies. One of these exactly. things is not like the others. One of these things just isn't the same. <laughs> Renee, where's your bee mug no tie dye shirt? I am. I am so. I am so disappointed. I got a. <laughs> I got a shirt for you. Actually, Andy already has this one. The Gemini dress shirt from Ministry of Supply, our sponsor today for oh. Mac Break Weekly. Dress smarter, work smarter. This is a company created by uh, 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 engineers from MIT four years ago. <laughs> If you go to ministryofsupply.com, you could take a look at it, uh, ministryofsupply.com slash MacBreak. I'm wearing, uh, just coincidentally, the Ministry of Supply shorts I ordered some months ago before they were a sponsor because I was looking for something kind of high-tech that would, that would give as I walked, made out of really interesting material. Um, the whole idea is to use high-tech fabrics, high-tech design... To give you a better look and better clothes. They work with your body instead of against it. They have work clothes. They have sport clothes. All of them designed by MIT trained engineers to help regulate your body temperature. Keep you from getting too hot or too cold. That's something that B-Mug tie-dye just can't do. Moisture wicking fibers. They keep you dry. They stretch so you move freely. I've never had a more comfortable pair of shorts, i got to say. Uh... You got the Gemini chinos. That's the classic twill chino re engineered. They are there, right there. To move with you as you go through the day. This is literally cotton blended with temperature regulating phase change materials. This was invented at NASA, folks. It stores and releases body heat based on surrounding climate. You're basically wearing the same stuff astronauts wear. <laughs> Think of it as, uh, oh, how about this, the dress shirt? I got one here. Wait a minute, look at this. This is beautiful. This is the uh, archive dress shirt. So very, very attractive. That's the Gemini button down. That's what you got, Andy, right? That's that's what I got. And it's rich. What, what, I, what I liked about it when it came is that, uh, and I, I, sh I should mention that. Uh, You've I gone back to your uh, Ministry of Supply t-shirt. I, I, I took, I was, I was, I was taking that because I want to do it. Uh, I, you guys uh, sent me like a gift certificate because you wanted, you wanted, we were talking about this last right. weekend. And so you wanted to send me one of these, but the easier thing was to send a gift card. So I got that and this and the, the Gemini shirt. When it came in, I, I really like these engineered shirts because you take it out of the box and it looks like a regular standard dress shirt. But then you notice that the, uh, the cloth is, a different type of fiber and also when you examine it close i was looking at the, the stitching looking how nice the stitching was then notice that oh there's not it's, it's sort of like uh, there's these micro perforations in places where you can't see to like add ventilation and there's these little vents in the back where it would normally sort of like uh, uh, fold anyway uh, so it's not just uh, thin material it really is it's it really is like a almost like a like a race car where it's designed for airflow <laughs> i don't know what my body shape would look like like in the in, in a wind tunnel but uh, <laughs> and these and these and these, and these and like it's it's warm today i went out for like a 10 mile bike ride this morning uh, and if you're wearing cotton, you are adding like three pounds of wet weight <laughs> to your back and you're, it just sticks to you. But if you have an engineered shirt, that definitely costs more than the four pack of, of plain Fruit of the Loom t-shirts. But the thing is, like, I'm wearing a very nice t-shirt and it's like... I'm not, I'm not wet at all. I'm completely dry. I feel really cool. I've got a fan like underneath the table and I feel the cooling effect of the fan. Uh, and so the extra money it's cost to buy an engineered shirt like this uh, is on a day like this. It's like, that's why I spent the extra money. Yeah. I bought these shorts because I've been walking to work a lot, a couple of miles, and it's about 85 degrees outside right now. And I wanted something that would be stretchy and comfortable and they look great and you don't, and they feel great and you don't look like, um, as somebody said, Summertime comes around. There you are. Those are the aviator shirts I'm wearing. Summertime comes around and men start to dress like 12-year-olds. I think they look a little more uh, attractive, a little more stylish, and they sure feel good. Uh, the brushed interior on these shirts, very comfortable against the skin. I just also got these mercury sweaters. These are really nice. They're a really interesting mix of fabrics. Um, the, uh, the merino wool on the uh, extra fine merino wool wicks moisture and controls, the, uh, controls odor. There's one of these that has, like, coffee in it. 
to control odor. I can't remember which one that is. They're really, it's really kind of cool to see materials design come to shirts. Now, we got a deal for you, 15% off with your offer code MACBREAK. Just go to ministryofsupply.com slash MACBREAK. Take the 15% off. I think you'll see these are very affordable and really nice. And the thing is, they're going to last and last. They're so easy to maintain. They're wrinkle resistant. And uh, for travelers, that's what I got a lot of this is for traveling. Yeah. You can wash and dry them at home. No need to iron. They'll look great. Ministry of Supply. Now, don't wait because this offer will expire June 30th. You have one month. They also have stores in your neck of the woods, Andy. They have Boston stores, there's a San Francisco store, and there's a D.C. store coming soon. Yep. And you can use the 15% off there, too. Just say, I heard it on Mac Break Weekly. I, I, I also bought socks. Very nice socks. Good. Yeah. yeah. The, the only caveat I'll give is is that like uh, the tailored like the, the, the these are like stretchy t-shirts so they'll fit uh, everybody the tailored shirt I'm gonna have to like get a larger size because it is let, let's it's ath, ath, athletically cut for a sport that I yeah. apparently do not do because yeah. it's there it, it's you and nicely I need made a little bit of a looser cut right exactly I need a little bit more you know room for smuggling <laughs> smuggling and shoplifting I, I have, uh, room i think you can't fit a ham under that shirt andy exactly i couldn't <laughs> ministry of supply.com slash mac break don't forget the offer go mac break to save 15 percent i'm really happy with these i got the i got a jacket i'm really I, I, and this i bought yeah, all this stuff before they said hey we'd like to advertise i said oh good because i i have some of your clothes and i really like them Without, without getting to a really long rat hole, I just want to say that one of the things that I learned in the past five years of basically churning my wardrobe is that it's okay if if the price of a certain garment throws you off because it's more than you usually spend. It's okay to have like one or two copies of the really expensive T-shirt or the really expensive jacket or the really expensive pants and have the have uh, 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 the regular rotation contain like the regular cotton pants or the regular uh, T-shirt. And you wear I, I I'm going to wear this when it is a, like a day like this outside. I'll be very glad it's a day like this outside. And when it's really cold, I will use this as like a base layer uh, to insulate against uh, as it's you don't have to make your entire wardrobe really expensive things you but it's good to have like a balanced diet so that uh, every time you work where you reach into your closet you can get exactly the thing that you need i agree i agree uh time for our picks of the week let's start with mr renee ritchie from imore.com what do you got for us today so i've got an app and i have to admit up front that i don't listen to a lot of music so this app is traditionally would be lost on me like it just wouldn't be something that was on my radar but uh, i know the developer he's awesome i've met him at wwdc several times matt abras and i hope i'm pronouncing that right uh but then you know jim dalrymple was using it the last time i saw him in south bay a few weeks ago and dave mark who writes for the loop was raving about it so i, I took a little bit of a deeper look and and it's really, really cool. And he's always been very good at music apps. And what this does, you know, it's such a cliche to say it does what Apple Music should do. But I think in many ways it does. It just lets you sort of make Apple Music social in a way that's not connect at all, but in a way that lets you uh, share songs with, you know, people who, you, who you're connected to, but also build uh, playlists and share playlists. Uh, it has a bunch of other features as well. Like you can look at clips of videos and things like that, but really it's the collaborative social nature of the app. If I'm looking for music and I'm not just, you know, for you does a pretty good job, but sometimes I, I want to see what Jim is listening to, or I want to see maybe what Leo or uh, what Alex or Andy are, are listening to. Uh, and if I follow you on this service, I, I can really do that. It was one, I was on people's wish list for a long time that Apple would basically just look at all your friends' phones maybe and show you the most popular songs that were on their list that weren't on your list and to surface those for you. And this is sort of a first step there. It just takes, it integrates really well with Apple Music. You just hit uh, the share button and it's a share extension right in there and it lets you share whatever you're listening to with everyone else in the SoundShare community. But it's really where it is that you, so what is Leo listening to? What playlist can I build with Andy? Uh, that makes it, at least for me, a much more enjoyable experience. Like I can hit Serenity and see that it's all Hamilton all the time, but I can also see <laughs> the other things. But do we have to cooperate? Do I have to use it too? Yeah, I mean, you do have to invite your friends, so that is a, a bit of a barrier. But I think if, if you are really musically and socially inclined, this gives you functionality in a very direct and specific way that you just can't get from other I, apps. I agree. I think the best way to find music is to is to ask people, what do you listen to? This is this is be great. 
Absolutely. And like yeah. Instagram, you know, Facebook and Twitter and all of these have ability to share music, but it just gets lost in the fire hose. And like Instagram for photos, if you just want music, I know I can just go here and see what people whose opinions I value are listening to. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, sound share. Is it free? Uh, I, I'm on the beta, so I'm not sure. But it, it is out now. It, typically, yeah. Typically, social apps tend to be free, but I'll click on the button and see it. Okay. My apologies. No, that's all right. I didn't do that. Very good. So there it is. It is free, free yes. as in free, as in no cost. I think you have to do that for social apps, so you just never build any critical right, mass. Right, right. The whole key is to get get an audience in there. Andy Anako, your pick of the week. Um, mine is kind of an oddball thing. I'm a bit. I'm a big fan of a YouTube channel called Techmon. Uh, I can't remember it. T e c h m o a n. He's this uh, uh, British guy. I think he's in Manchester who does these really cool, like little uh, uh, reviews of cameras and stuff like that. Really, really nice. And uh, uh, and so he reviewed this thing. It's such a weird thing. It's called this the SoShine. A uh, six LED light, and here's what it is: you you go, you have only, like a bunch of it's a it's a Chinese thing. You buy, you get a pack of like a half a dozen of these things uh, for like a buck and a half each, and this is all it is. It is a USB device that has six super bright LEDs in it, and so if you put it into any USB port, you get like this really, really intense light. And the cool thing is that it's not just a light. And see, you go—you already see like how bright it is. Like here is actually—I actually, I should probably have had that set up like as a lighting system for this show since I had my temporary lighting things going. Uh, but uh, you, uh, there is also a touch sensor on the back of it so that you can have it. If you hold it down, it will actually dim. There is no manual. There you go. And you can actually tap it again to actually set a certain light setting. Light setting. And then when you unplug it and plug it back in again. Uh, it will then remember that setting and go back to exactly that same setting when you tap it and turn it back on again. Uh, and first of all, the, the, the first great feature of it is it's like, again, like a buck 25 each in, in a pack of six. And but it's tiny enough that you may as you know, you've got this drawer full of like old like USB phone chargers that you never use anymore, like the little marshmallow ones. Well, how about you just plug that into like a kitchen socket or like a hall socket? And this is now just a night light. Or how about you have this like in your wallet or in your laptop bag because I almost always have a phone charger with me. And if I ever need like an extra source of light, I can just simply pluck this out. Or pretty much any time you need a little bit of extra light somewhere. I was actually, I actually had one. I, I, I bought two packs, which means that you, again, a buck 25, so you may as well just like put them wherever. I actually had one plugged into the back of my TV, you know, where it has that USB diagnostic port. And it's always on, but it's consuming like no power pretty much. And so basically whenever I need to change cables, there's always like a little like downwash light that is illuminating the labels for like all the different things that I'm plugging in. Uh, and I just I just like it because I love dirt cheap little things that work well. Uh, and again, granted, there's no <laughs> there's no case, there's no logo, there's no nothing, but I bet that you could like get an action figure and like hollow it out and put this in the back and have like your <laughs> Batman, your Batman or your Wonder Woman nightlight USB nightlight. I like uh, it. <laughs> it does. It doesn't. It doesn't uh, uh, fart rainbows like your upcoming well, USB. Uh, not everything, thing, but can be amazing. But yeah, but for for buck twenty five, you can make whatever you want, <laughs> excrete whatever you want into it and, <laughs> with, with, with bright light. I imagine they're using something like that in addition to a fog machine to create. Wow, it is bright. Holy cow. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually kind of, at its maximum setting, it's actually kind of painful to look at. Wow. But you can, you can dim it down. Is there anything they can't do? My God. Do you think that this is, the, you, you can't imagine the difference between growing up, having a having like a, a, a camping lantern as a kid where it takes this huge, <laughs> like like a box, of, a boot <laughs> box sized battery. <laughs> and if you left it on when you fell asleep reading it's a comic gone. book, it was dead and it cost you another $8. And it wasn't that versus, bright. <laughs> right. Versus this thing that will light up my my entire room, and I could leave yeah. it on for four days during a blackout, and not even bother to turn it off, and it will still. Uh, you kiss today. You you live in a, you live in a world of wonders, and I hope you're grateful for all this. Don't all this even suffering. appreciate it. My God. By the way, I bought those crazy precision steel one two three blocks that you recommended last week, and I love them. Yeah. I got the tin it's ones, expensive. the uh, titanium. They're just <laughs> they're just so yeah. cool, and you're right, covered with machine oil. So I had to yep. brush them off. I'm using. I, I, I have, so I have fun. Friends, 
I have Cream Cam 3000, the future video podcasting hooked up. Here's what I've got, like, it, they're using for, like, right now. I've got, like, my, my beverage here, but I don't want to accidentally, oh, like, spill it on clever. my thing. So I actually just have it here so that if I happen to, like, knock it over, it's not going to it's not gonna knock over these really cool steel boxes. <laughs> We're also like, confirmed it's a, for pants. Yep. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Uh, I, I there's so many fun things to talk about. Uh, I I wasn't sure what to pick this week, but I have for a long time recommended and used. It started with Fink. I like having a package manager on OS 10 that lets me install uh, other useful Unixy command line style tools. Fink was a long time favorite. They kind of got superseded by Homebrew, which I probably still recommend. It's b r e w dot s h. Easy to install, and uh, it lets you install using a simple command, brew, uh, a lot of other useful utilities that don't come with OS X or update things. Like if you want to, OS X comes with an old version of Python, you want to get a newer version. I found a really fun command line utility, bpython3, that lets me do Python 3 at the command line. It's really cool. All of that's available with Homebrew, but there's a new one that I think has some real features to recommend. And if you haven't yet settled on Homebrew, take a look at Nix, N-I-X. That's N-I-X-O-S dot org. Uh, and this actually is both Linux and OS X. It doesn't have the variety of packages that Homebrew or uh, Fink had, but it's growing very rapidly because it's a package manager that is used very widely. And it does something very smart, which is uh, it, it keeps all of your installed uh, apps in a single folder and it's very easy to uninstall them so they don't mess up your system. Homebrew and Fink both do that a little bit but this is even more, better uh, frankly than uh, than either of those. So the packages are somewhat limited but for a lot of people that isn't a problem because um, you know if it's got the packages you care about then then it doesn't matter that it has a thousand more. So Nix is part of a, a larger OS uh, distribution, but uh, Nix, the package manager, is available for OS X and works quite nicely. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, uh, check it out. N-I-X-O-S dot org slash N-I-X. Uh, but if you don't have that homebrew, you should have one of them. I mean, how else are you going to put Emacs on your <laughs> OS X machine, right? Right. Right. Thank you, Renee. By the way, spaces or tabs? Consider it, because the wrong answer could get you booted out of this show. <laughs> Did you see Silicon Valley? Maybe you, I don't, I'm hearing dead silence, so neither of you I saw Silicon I, Valley. I, I, I only I watch it when it shows up on iTunes. I don't get the HBO. <laughs> okay, never mind. People at home, you know what I'm talking about. Renee Ritchie, imore.com. Great to have you. All the great podcasts and the great writing you've done. A million <laughs> words and going strong. <laughs> imore.com. He's on the... Uh, Twitter at R E N E R I T C H I E. Four spaces so it confuses people for a tab, Leo. That's what I'm going for. Yes. Well, there's a, well, <laughs> I, I don't, no spoilers, but, no spoilers. Uh, but uh, it becomes an issue. <laughs> Four non break spaces or ASCII variants. There we go. <laughs> I, oh, I want to, at one point, so uh, uh, who's the who's the head of uh, Pied Piper? You know, the gangly, funny guy. Oh, I don't know. can't remember his name. But anyway, he's, he's like adamant. Why would you use spaces instead of I a tab? Yeah, I, and I then don't understand. The his girlfriend says, because you don't know what it, tab will look different on depending on the machine and what the tab's setting to. You have to use spaces. He says, but that's four keystrokes. He says, I'm all about file compression. So he tries <laughs> to demonstrate it to her by taking the stairs eight steps at a time. Of, <laughs> and it doesn't end well. <laughs> He also uses Emacs. All right. And Andy Nanako from the Chicago Sun-Times, a great pleasure. Richard, that's it. Richard, great pleasure. Thank you. For there, 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 are, there are kinds of engineers for whom the easiest solution is to force the entire, everyone in the entire world to use a monospaced font. There you go. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not one of those people, so I would tabs. That's tabs. It, it was om almost my uh, actually pick of the week was a monospaced font called Hack. I collect. I have a folder of programming fonts. I collect them. Oh, oh, they're great. Droid SF Sans, Monaco. Source Code Pro. Don't use, don't use Monaco. Really? Come on. There's so much better out there in Consolata. But Hack is a nice one. It's one I've been using lately. Uh, 
This is turning into the terminal show. SF now. Mono all next week. <laughs> SF Mono, that's, that's the one? Every every time we talk about this instead of some lawsuit, we 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 push the eject yes. button on two different lawsuit yes. stories, <laughs> and we everyone is saying thank God thank they just acknowledge God. it exists and that there's something better to talk about like monospaced fonts and yes. Marvel movies. When they make That's a monospaced yeah. Comic Sans, then my life will be complete. <laughs> Probably somebody already has Comic <laughs> Mono Sans. Comic <laughs> Mono. What have you done, Leo? <laughs> Mark your calendars, kids. This is the end of civilization. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Uh, we will be back next Tuesday, as always, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, that's uh, 1800 UTC. Two weeks from now, right, is a WWDC, and that keynote is on a Monday, if I'm if I'm remembering correctly. All right, so uh, we'll figure out who's not going. Are you going, uh, Renee? Of course you are. Yes. Andy, you staying home though, right? Of course you are. I'm staying home, so yeah. I will be with you. So in join spirit, us, spirit, body, or in electrons. If you'd like I to think do it via the electrons at, at 10 a.m. Pacific on uh, next a week from Monday, two weeks hence, and then of course we'll discuss it in two weeks on uh, Mac Break Weekly. I'm, I think there's gonna be a lot of stuff to say. There's gonna be a lot of stuff. I to say. please so. I think so. They only release a mono font. We'll have enough to say. <laughs> Comic mono, ladies and gentlemen. It's San coming Francisco soon. Francisco Mono. San Ariel Francisco Mono. Mono. Let's do the whole world a favor. Ariel Mono. Ariel Mono would be all right. I'd take that. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Remember, you can watch the show live, but you can also get it on demand if you want. Audio and video available at twit.tv slash mbw or subscribe. Don't forget, last few days to get uh, your special world tour t-shirt, teespring, T-E-E spring.com slash twit. We do these limited edition shirts um, June 12th is the final day to get it on the front. It says Twit IPTV. We finally come out as an IPTV network. On the back, we call it the World Tour T because it looks like these are tour dates, but no, these are all the shows on the Twit network. And we're making them a, a, a very affordable at 20 bucks. There are men's and women's styles and sizes to fit all, uh, including programmer sizes. But 12 days... <laughs> as we do this so please get at get over to teespring.com slash twit and get your one of a kind what are you laughing at Andy? I'm, I'm just thinking that perhaps we should have a i'm going to do a kickstarter where it's going to be fun like i need five thousand dollars so i can spend two weeks in a hotel room doing nothing but thinking of a really good alternative word for athletic cut that it, that, that says, for people that's not insulting it just simply says that for those of us who are work just as hard to yeah, I think Levi's already did it. It's those jeans with a skosh more room. Mm. <laughs> skosh cut. We need we need more a skosh. How about how about, about was cut? <laughs> was there, cut. There is, there is nothing. There is nothing offensive about any anything about you being compared to Steve Wozniak. <laughs> if it's that you need to have a shirt that's cut a little bit more fully around the tummy, that's <laughs> fine. Was cut. I was like cut. It. That's that. I'm. That's there. You go. Was cut any, jeans. Any company that will sell like clothing where one of the options is a was cut. <laughs> I don't care what it is. I will buy it. <laughs> uh, the bandolier. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Now get back to work. <laughs> Break time's over. And the cuffs on the sleeves are extra big for the Nixie watch. <laughs> That's right. I love it when the cuffs right at the end. Yes, and it did. I like, was I like this idea. The was I like cut. this idea. Yep, yep. We have I'm a ready to go steaks, on, on too. Shark I mean, like, I would just, I would order a steak that was a was cut, too. Yeah. <laughs> Everything should be was size. Yes. Yeah, I agree. I have. You want that car was sized? Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Super duper was. Economy, business, or was class, sir. <laughs>